in the hunt to find the greatest treasure in Omniverse, treasure marks by X, fighting the scariest Omniversal monsters. But finally, I can smell it. Could it be? The entire Fortnite storyline, every detail of it, your limited power all in this book. Begin the entire storyline of Fortnite. In the beginning, it was only a pitch black nothingness. Ruler of this realm of darkness sleep within it. God of life before creation. The nothing. His main form being a decaying living force. One which can manipulate dreams. Evolve beings into beyond powerful with his darkness. And since he is shapeless, a living force. You can't really hurt the nothing. Now the birth of the first creation, born by all light in the omniverse coming together. New God, the everything. The darkness and light energies of these two gods collide creating something beautiful, a big bang of creation and destruction, a darkness and light. One single point which all energies of the omniverse work together at balance, like the symbol of yin and yang, the zero point. By the creation of this half-sentient orb begins the birth of all omniverse. Billions of realities born from it while they themselves contain their own multiverse and universes. Realities which already exist like Marvel, DC, Transformers and so on. The zero point makes a connection to all of those as well, controlling every single reality time itself and much more. Basically being the omniverse's manager in one location, a place called Reality Zero, where every single other world connects right into. This Reality Zero is the defense of the zero point. It is completely lonely with no living beings within it. While Reality Zero is also fully hidden, no one knows or will ever know of it. Until one day, everything changes. The everything and nothing gods used to be at peace ruling over the omniverse. One day the nothing wishes to go beyond what creation there is. He hates how weak all of us are. So the nothing wishes from the everything to together evolve life. Take it to the next level and make it perfect. Together the two gods create a double sided island within reality zero. Then locking up the zero point within a vault in the middle. Built out of an indestructible material so no one can access it. While 
while after building a bubble around the island, which kept all beings within here unable to leave this place or come into it from the outside. Coming towards this bubble would burn you alive. There are only some technologies which let you go through it, one being a giant mech, a bubble made for living beings because this loop and the islands are exactly made for nothing's wish, of making life perfect. The loop makes the beings affected by it not be able to talk nor remember anything at all. It only allows your instincts to act and your muscle memory to learn, making all loopers only remember being attacked in the past by others within the islands because of their instincts, cause of it going crazy fighting everyone for survival. This loop lasts for 22 minutes exactly, as the storm takes over to end the past loops. The storm powered by the nothing's darkness which is held back by the light of the everything, as a storm shield. This shield makes the storm take over the island slowly and kill every being within it. All the way to the 22 minutes mark a storm taking over everything. If there is only one single person alive at this exact moment getting a victory royale, they get known as a perfect being evolved enough by the loop, being rewarded by the zero point. The reward being the zero point finally freeing you from being looped, putting you still on the island. But there is no more storm, no shields and you can't see the loop happening on the island anymore. While here you finally get to speak again and remember only some memories. You get to remember every single loop you have gone through, all the fights, but no more. The rest of your memories you can only access once fully leaving reality zero into a different reality. The everything and nothing also used to grant you powers for successfully leaving the loop. Being why there are so many super powerful beings in this game. One issue with this is, on this island outside the loop, if you die you are dead forever. No more turning into blue cubes. One more thing, once you manage to leave the loop, the zero point looks at you as a perfect being, fully trained. So it duplicates you, creating a snapshot of you kept within the loop forever. The snapshots used to be made so new loopers get to be trained against the best of the best. Now that the perfect in life system is fully built, it's time for everything and nothing to bring in people from other realities, into the islands to become perfect. Breaking the rule of reality zero being kept hidden and lonely, the two gods choose five realities among the billions to start perfecting first. The first chosen reality is actually home of Geno, one which he has a kingdom within it called the Oathbound Kingdom, more on Geno later. This reality has two sides so far, a modern side and one knighted kingdom side inspired by the European knighted culture. Second one is a frozen reality, one which Ice King rules within it, this also having one kingdom with Viking style sides while another yet again more modern advanced side. The reality is inspired by Norse culture. Third, a jungled reality, one which I believe Origin and Cube Queen to be from. One which only has one ancient side unlike the others, no modern side. Because many years ago the entire people of it abandoned here, moving to a new home. This home being among the stars. Reality inspired by the Mayan culture. Fourth, a reality filled with crimes and hastes. One which has yet again a historic side and another modern more towards futuristic side, filled with many syndicates and an empire ruling over called the River Guard Empire. Reality inspired by the Japanese culture. Finally a deserted reality yet again with two sides. One modern side and another yet again historic side where Colosseum is from, inspired by the Roman and Greek culture. Why these realities all except one have a modern and a historic side is because these historic sides are for the people who managed to escape the loop in the beginning, becoming perfect and keeping their kingdom same forever, while the more normal people of their realities kept evolving and changing with time. These realities and their perfect rulers all being gifted the most powerful material of all omniverse called kinetic ore, a magical material with many abilities, one that can also absorb kinetic energy, turning it into whatever is needed. One form of this material is reflective kinetic ore which can pass light through it, cloaking you invisible. Another is kinetic prism 
system used to manipulate light. And lastly, they evolved the refined kinetic ore, the most powerful version of this material, which can multiply energy passed through it into an insane amount of infinite power and energy. Here is also a look at unmined raw kinetic ore. One day enough people of these realities leave the loop becoming perfect and gaining powers. That day is exactly when the nothing imagines a world of perfect order. One single reality which these perfect people from the loop only get to be part of and all the other people and realities will not. They all will be destroyed and killed. One world and no more because there needs to be only a single reality in order to reach a perfect ordered world. If more than one reality, that would be many worlds and orders, so creating chaos. Then nothing imagining this and bringing it to the everything is when it all changes. Everything hates this idea. The peace among the two gods breaks, beginning the universal war. With this universal war beginning, three factions get born from it. The first faction being the last reality. As the name makes it obvious, this army is made to follow the nothing's dream and vision. That being to create a last and only reality of perfect order. These people fight to create themselves the most perfect home possible. The ruler of this army used to be the cube king. While going around in their motherships and cube cradle being the size of a huge moon, destroying countless realities. The Cube King at those moments started to see beauties within the realities, uniqueness and reasons to keep them all alive. This leading into Cube King quitting last reality and escaping them. He doesn't want to be a destroyer of worlds anymore. Instead, Origin wants to become a protector of them all now. At the Cube King's absence, a new ruler takes over called Cube Queen. She has no love for any of these realities at all. Cube Queen controls Cube which run by the energy put within them and can create cube monsters of many forms. That energy within them can be darkness or light, or even a third golden one that so far seems to be connected to a world of afterlife called the spirit realm. Where the souls of the dead go into in this game's world? This spirit world is a realm that if you get connected into its energy, it allows you to see visions of the future. The last reality takes a liking into this power so they find a way to connect right into the spirit world. Using its energy to see their future and how to alter it, while on the other hand also using an alternate dimension called the sideways to build a border around the spirit realm so only the last reality can get to use this energy for future visions. If that sounds OP, it's not the end. The last reality also has an army of aliens with advanced UFOs and their massive cube cradle, all running by the darkness energy of the cubes. Then there is the chrome, insanely OP living half-sentient material, which has an extremely fast multiplying time, and it's made to just like the Midas touch take over things in no time. It also can transfer people its chromes from a place to another. This chrome is an evolved better version of the same chromium that created the spire in the future, both having darkness within them, while it also is a favorite of the nothing that he himself chooses who is allowed to command the chrome. The nothing has so far allowed the herald, a plant Space being which has the powers to look into places he wishes and much more. An alien's commander and a being from Black Seas to control it. Then there is a recent one called Bites. Bites is a new member of Last Reality that shows us how exactly the Nothing chooses who is allowed in the army and who gets to control the Chrome. The Nothing can speak through anything which has darkness within it and manipulates you through it. The Chrome on the TV is near Bites speak to him, asking him if he wants to find his true self and evolve joining the last reality. If said yes, you will be forced to go through many extremely hard tasks. But if you come out of them successfully, that proves the nothing you are a perfect being, bringing you into the last reality, calling you his champion, while also evolving you with his darkness. Bites evolved by getting permission to also control the crumb. If you fail any of the nothing's tasks, he knows of you being weak, therefore you being killed right away. 
the last reality is the strongest and the largest army of all omniverse built by the people of the five realities. Now the imagined order. This organization is created and ruled over by one genetic scientist and king called Geno. Geno who seems to be the first person to ever escape the loop after it's leaving his old found kingdom and instead of that creating the imagined order. Making the snapshot of his become the king of his kingdom instead and from now on that snapshot is called the ageless. Geno created the imagined order because as the name says he also just like the nothing imagined the world of perfect order. But instead of nothing's horrifying destruction leaving only one world behind. Geno's imagined order is kind of a middle ground between the other two factions. Geno and Io wants to instead turn all realities perfect and protect them all. Many perfect worlds than just a single one. Then also to stop the last reality from reaching their goal. While this don't sound that bad, Geno is changing the natural order of the universe and how it functions with this. Then him messing with the zero points causes destruction in some realities. Exactly why soon the third faction gets created to counter them too. Till then it's time for this faction's members, which by becoming part of the imagined order, Geno will evolve you into becoming immortal. The IO has an inner circle with many higher ups, which they mostly are the only ones to know of Geno. Then there is Dr. Stone, a very respected member and a higher up, who has a brilliant mind then because of it being given the control of the bridge. Bridge is a place right between the two islands, where the IO fully controls the loop from and protects the zero point, and messes with it in there once they fully take over the island. Now we have Gunner, he is the chainsaw lover and the brute of this army, but he was mainly chosen as a fake IO boss show off. Everyone in IO lower ranks than Gunner and Son were told that Gunner is their leader and boss, to keep Geno safe and protected hard to find by his enemies. Now for the members who think that he is their boss. First we got John Jones, the highest rank agent of IO who always gets sent to the loop when he is needed to deal with something within there. Exactly why there are more snapshots of John Jones than anyone else. He also knows 342,000 languages and apparently has a really tiny brain at the same time. Then how tiny is my brain if so? Jones used to have a children and a wife. He joins the IO so the Imagine Order protects his family since his reality is a really dangerous place because it seems to be the save the world planet. A very cursed and dead world. The Winder tech from there also teased to have connections with IO. While only the IO workers get evolved becoming immortal never aging. So Jones becomes immortal too. His family don't since they are not IO workers and want nothing to do with it. This leads into Jones family dying from old age and Jones really if ever getting to see them being too focused on his work with the Imagine Order. Jones still kept going because from the start to him and everyone it felt like them and the IO were doing the right thing. There is also a whole criminal family working within IO. That's being the Midas family. Midas who is obsessed with gold leading into him finding a cursed treasure that gave him and Marigold golden touch powers. He is also a mastermind, super smart person, the crime boss and the leader of a faction of IO called the Ghost. While leading the research group of IO experimenting on doomsday devices. More on that later. Midas used to be a king too but turning into a fallen king and Marigold is extremely like him in many ways, just not the biggest fan of the gold touch idea. Then there is his daughter Jules who is not like him at all. Jules has no golden powers and aims at helping people with her creations, becoming the best engineer ever with the craziest inventions, even with her own robotic owl called Ohm that is actually tattooed on Midas's body. There are also tattoos related to Oro, Marigold's name, Ghost logo, Midas name, crown, eight balls and much much there is so much detail on this man. Jules does not have the best relationship with his father cause of what he does but Midas still would kill the entire world to protect them. Midas also has a cat. Where 
interesting one. Now we have some other agents working within our yellow like Lynx, who has a really cool nanotech cat suit. These agents, Spire Guards, Core, Io Guards, everyone that works for Ghost and Shadow, and just way, way too many people. The Io will have control on the islands for thousands of years, meaning that all or most of the members of them and all the other factions are older than a thousand years. The third and final faction now being the seven, our heroes. Most of the members of this faction are former IO members, experts who sense the Imagine Order is slowly being corrupted. So they betrayed their faction, joining together forming the seven. These members follow the vision of the everything goddess, meaning that they want to protect the natural order of the omniverse, keeping the world how it is and how it's always been and protected. Their focus enemy is more Geno and the IO rather than the last reality. All the members of this faction also hide their names from the others, coming up with a hero title for themselves instead. The coolest part about these guys is their suits. These suits are built out of a completely indestructible material, which I believe to be also kinetic ore shell. Since not just these suits are indestructible and can manipulate energy, these suits can even cloak you invisible just like reflective kinetic ore can. Even if indestructible or immune to water and electricity, usable as a spacesuit, there are still types of magics and extreme dangers that could damage the suits. One of those is the dark metal from DC Universe, and the other which we know of the Ice King's freezy powers. If those damage the suit, they still will take time to repair themselves. So after a little time, the suits are yet again perfectly protecting you. So perfectly that it protects that foundation even in the nothing's realm itself, the most dangerous place in the omniverse. The visors of these suits will animate based on the person in them speaking. They have extremely high speed jet boots that can take you into space in no time. Energy can gather on the hands of the suits for extreme punches, while the suits can have physical or light beam blades. Hand blasters, a protection force built around the characters to keep them safe. All the information shown within the masks. Nanotech. Oh, and the suits can break the laws of physics. You probably get it by now. These are just insanely powerful. They also have built-in AI system which keeps a memory of every event the suits and the characters go through. Full control and full connection between the member suits and much more. Also, the seven love to have a hard impact with their entrance. They come within these unique meteors built from the hop rock magical material, which to me has to be a form of the kinetic core. The seven within a container inside of these meteors waiting to be activated. Now the seven members, we have leader of the seven, Foundation. This character played by a super famous actor called Rock Johnson. He is the chosen one probably by the everything goddess to be worthy of leading this faction into saving the omniverse. Foundation does not mess around. He is extremely focused on his mission and is really harsh on who to trust. That should be because it seems like that Foundation was someone who worked within IO. Even one really close to Geno. But Geno and IO slowly becoming corrupted leads into Foundation seeing Geno as the biggest threat of all omniverse. A close friend of Foundation breaking his trust. And Foundation will not rest until he makes sure Geno is gone for good. Second member we have the Visitor, the navigational expert of the Seven who is extremely mysterious with not much known about him because it seems like that he might be Donald Mustard himself, the creator of Fortnite's storyline. Third we have the Scientist, engineer, inventor and the tech specialist of the Seven who's the one which builds all the gadgets the Seven use and programs their AI for their suits, even creates all the suits. Scientists will even build a sentient AI of his. The scientist is actually in love with the fourth member being Paradigm. Paradigm comes from a reality which has a unique connection with technology. This leads to her becoming the pilot expert of the Seven since Paradigm can use and control mechs, spaceships, rockets and anything better than anyone else with her mass knowledge in technology. Her home reality was this to be number 659 but not fully confirmed yet. Paradigm is not only a pilot but she is also one of the smartest seven members. Paradigm is acted and played by Brie Larson. Now on to the fifth one and the most interesting actually. The Origin. He actually is the cube king we talked about. Once leaving the last 
reality. Imagine Order manages to find the Cube King while his guard is down, leading to them getting to capture and prison origin in their most protected cell, said to be impossible to break out of, while forcing this suit on him which uses light beams to stop origin from using his powers. In there, origin learns a lot about the IO and how just like the last reality, the IO also needs to be stopped. This comes in really handy once the 7 at one of their attacks against the IO come across the Cube King aka the origin cell. Origin explaining to them how he is no more the king of the cubes and that he wants to join with the 7 fighting against the IO and the last reality. The foundation agrees with him becoming a 7 member, scientists building him this super cool suit. Origin becoming the field general and the tactician of the 7 because of his thousand years long or even longer experience in fights and war. Origin even becomes foundation's favorite member, earning the highest trust of foundation out of any other member, leading into origin becoming somewhat of a co-leader of the 7. In the end, we also have the last two members of the 7 who are twin sisters with their 7 names imagined and order. Yes, taken right after the name of Io. These two are actually the daughters of leader of Io, Geno himself. They were genetically evolved since birth to be as perfect as possible, becoming strong and immortal just like their father. The sisters loved the ruling over the island with their father, this place being like a playground for them. One day an argument between Geno and the inner circle of Io happens regarding if his daughters are as powerful as he is, leading into Geno agreeing to send the sisters into the loop, saying how they would be the first to escape the loop and even said how long it would exactly take them. While the sisters do manage to leave the loop, they do much later than the time Geno said they will. This makes Geno feel guilt within him. He tried to change the sisters into becoming just like him, yet they still did not. Geno finally realizes here how forcing his daughters to become as he is was a terrible choice and he is taking the chance from the sisters to build their own life, be who they want to be. So Geno chooses to fix this mistake by wiping out the memories of the sisters, removing them from reality zero, taking their snapshots who were made after they escaped the loop to work for Geno instead, do as he needs. People in this game seem to look at the snapshots as a less important than the originals. Pretty much racism towards the snapshots. Snapshotsism. The sisters are finally free to build their own life, but that only leads to them meeting with the seven, telling the seven how they remember nothing of their past and who they even are. The seven having lots of experience with the IO, especially foundation, know exactly why. Therefore, once the right time comes, telling the sisters their past is connected to the IO, especially Geno being their father. This makes the sisters extremely pissed at their father, making them join the seven to fight their father because of this to take revenge on him. Sisters also choose their seven names as imagined and order because they want their original identity back. Geno who has tried to break his daughters free from himself, leading to the sisters now fighting to be once again what their father forced them to become. Imagined becomes the maverick of the seven, her only focus to take revenge on her father, while Order, the spy of the seven who loves helping people and freeing them from the loop, sending them back to their home worlds. The sisters love and care for each other more than anything else. That concludes all the members of the seven. It's time for the beginning of this omniversal war. The story begins with an attack from the Seven towards Io, a meteor coming towards the island and landing right near Dusty. Then the imagined order who used to be known as the government in chapter 1, builds an entire research lab around this meteor, trying to figure out what is going on. The meteor cools down breaking to reveal a Seven pod within it, the one leaving the pod revealed to be the visitor, who easily destroys an army of Io guards prepared for his activation right away. Around the same time the imagined order members seem to be bored. So for fun, they plan to create a movie on this island, one produced by the Winder Tech. The movie team will be using four main sets, one being tilted towers for the main action of the movie, other represent for the main villain of this movie being Omega to break out of it, then a hero's layer and a villain's one, the movie being called Prepare for Collision. Once Omega escapes from his prison, the heroes in their layer find the hiding location of his. Within their Omega with the help of other 
other villains creates a massive robot army, and a huge fight between our heroes and villains takes place soon. After this fight, the villains come up with a master plan to build a massive rocket and destroy tilted towers crashing right into it. The movie team thinks of using the Hop Rocks release from the crashed meteor as fuel for this rocket, so the IO sends trucks to gather them all up. The Hop Rocks get turned into rocket fuel and everything is ready for launch. Before that happens, the visitor had tracked down where the Hop Rocks were taken to. Finding this rocket, he secretly modifies the rocket even adding a 7 logo onto it and hides within waiting for the movie villains to begin launch. So it happens, the first ever live story event. Rocket nearly collides with Tilted, but right before a rift by Visitor using the power of the Hop Rocks opens. Then more rifts as finally a massive rift as Visitor leaves the loop. This rift does not go away for a while, because it is called the Sideways Rift. These will take a long time to heal up and close up unless a special device is used from both sides of the rift to close it up. The scary thing about these is that they do not use the zero point for working, instead they travel the space between realities to connect into each other. That is space between realities is voice and the realm of the nothing. From the nothing's realm, a cube manages to slip through the sideways rift right into the island. Everything goes wrong from this moment. The cube keeps moving around leaving runes on the island. When finished, the cube drops right onto Loot Lake and fuses with the waters becoming one. A cube ability which we have seen happening once more. While all of that happens, the sideways rift has even caused worlds to collide into one another. Things from many realities dropped and rifted into the island while things from the island rifted into other realities, even Fortnite items rifted into real life. One of those the Derberger heads dropped within California, found by a person driving his golf cart into it. This person sprays a kitsune mask on the burger and after, a real life person getting rifted right into the Fortnite island, with him burger returning to the island as well. At here he meets Rex, cuddle team leader and most importantly Bright Bomber. These two solely develop a relationship falling in love, as them and the other two friends go to golfing, racing, enjoying a party at a pool, where around that same time Drift finds a mask, the same one he sprayed on the burger. This man had dreamed of what future he would go through, probably being how he was the one to find the burger as well, interacting with it exactly why he was brought right onto the island with the burger, and it was said that someone left a mask for him to find, turning him into a target after, and from here being known as Drift. This is a fox clan mask, one which is chosen will will get great mythical kitsune powers, amazing powers which even allow you to control opening rifts between realities and much more. More on them later. For now, Drift keeps evolving, learning about his new powers while still having fun with his friends, until things start to feel wrong. Mysterious gods get rifted into many places of the island, ones who seem to have been part of the IO, here because the IO is worried that this cube is trying to destroy the entire island. The friends team even gets to meet the cube after 
after leading to something horrible. Drift girl touches the cube and it creates a corrupted snapshot of her, doing this to many others on the island as well. This is an ability of the nothing, being able to take over you through connection with one of his dark weapons. What now? The second act of the cube's mission begins with it retaking its shape under the lake's house, causing it to float while opening a massive hole underneath. The cube creating a tornado moves the ground chunk to the runes it created before gathering lots of energy through them. Then with all these energies going wild, exploding the floating island into chunks as it opens a portal within the sky, spawning lightnings which create cube monster spawners on the island. While it keeps doing that, the cube slowly wears weakened, cracking up and finally exploding. While the explosion strikes a massive lightning which hits a frozen moon in space near the island, and also the explosion causing us to get teleported right into a place known as the in-between, a magical world where we see lines or realities reaching into something in the center, our first hint into the existence of the zero point. While there a rift butterfly comes to rift us back into the island, letting us see the death scene of the cube. It's beautiful. But wait, a frozen ice chunk can be seen within the distance as slowly coming towards us. That is Polar Peak. The cube while here to cause chaos is main goal was to hit the frozen moon in space on top of the island with a lightning. That is strike messing up the moon leading into an important polar chunk of it dropped right into the oceans of the island from the space and the slowly coming towards till collision. With it, the ice junk brings people and research labs onto the island with planes, all controlled by the Santa of Fortnite, Sergeant Winter, who has prepared gifts to give to the people on the island. Those gifts being AK-47 grenades and more guns. The most American Santa to ever exist! The chunk also brings up a massive castle which slowly gets revealed more and more by the ice melting. This castle contains a ruler within called the Ice King which used to be known by another name. The one who rules over the first frozen reality, and the castle having many dangerous weapons and beings the collections of the Ice King. He collects these through the omniverse because they're too dangerous and too powerful and can ruin realities if they're left out there free. An infinity blade even being brought to us among his collection. You could call him an omniversal protector. But he did not do this alone. The Ice King had five knights who collected these dangerous items within a storing them in many castles they own. But one day the most favorite knight of the Ice King thinks of using these powerful collections to alter realities into whatever Ice King and the Knights want. The Knights agree with him. The King was worried of this day happening. To protect all realities, he now has to freeze his own five knights. While then the one who came up with this idea of being the Fire Knight gets frozen and prisoned under the Polar Peak itself. And after the Ice King moves all their collections onto his frozen moon to make sure no one else can access these dangers. Then taking this in entire ice moon outside the frozen reality into a new one, which the Ice King has had experience with before, knowing how it's the most lonely and safe reality out there, perfect for him to hide his collections within. Ice moon has reality traveled into reality zero, exactly why it has been near our island. In the middle of all this once again, the imagined order is bored. So they create a concert set in Pleasant Park, for the performance of none other than Marshmallow. For its time this was so much fun. As 
said the cube just brought the polar peak to us, and the ice is slowly melting more and more, leading to the king being awakened from his eternal sleep, getting worried of his collection being freed from the ice and awakened or stolen. So he goes to freeze the infinity blade once more, and after to stop the polar ice from melting especially to keep his fire knight frozen in the castle, he with the help of the ice queen tries to make the entire island frozen instead, by creating a protection ball and within it gathering insane amount of energy, to then create a bigger scale of himself bringing in a massive snowstorm into the entire island, freezing everything up in no time. But sadly, the energy of the island is much stronger than his, and it fights back to turn the island's temperature into the natural states again, leading to the polar peak melting more until the fire knight awakens, freeing himself from the prison. He is extremely pissed and his lava body has fully lost his heat becoming a rock. The prisoner does his best to awaken the eternal flames within him and once he does, in the absence of a fire king, he transforms into the king of the flames instead of a knight, planning to build himself an army for taking revenge on the ice king using yet again another collection of his, stealing the hybrid eggs. For now. on the ground start forming and the heat levels of the islands are beyond what we have seen before, leading to the formation of a volcano for the new king. Fire King's flames bring the hybrid eggs into life as ninja dragons who will serve as his minions, while these frozen husks bring the minions of the ice king. Then a new group reaches to our island, third one being pirates with Captain Blackheart, one cursed to become an undead pirate. While the war against fire and ice king begins, these three also search for a secret treasure of power. But so is another faction, Imagined Order. After the cube's explosion and the reveal of the in-between, the Ayo have figured out how to find the power causing the magical world to work how it does. That power is underneath ground, so they start digging many unnatural places until finding an unbreakable material, with magical sounds coming through it. This leads to them finding the exact middle of this material being where the cube exploded at, the loot lake, digging the whole place open revealing a massive vault far more advanced than any technology Ayo has ever seen. After being revealed one by one exactly 5 keys from it float 5 because 5 realities, and they each have a unique puzzle we need to complete. Puzzles teased by the runes they project. There was even a key that became a DJ and we had to dance for it. I love that one! The Peelies fought for one of the keys they had to sacrifice the Peely King, throwing him into the lava. Man, we managed to do all the 5 puzzles correctly leading to a reward being given to us. The Bolt opening and us finally getting to see the god of all omniverse, the energy making the island function how it does, the zero point, and the mask near it one of singularities being the guardian of the zero point, one who to me was also the butterfly rift, since those things can be actual people turned into rift butterflies. Her gift to us finishing the puzzle is letting us free one of the six vaulted items by choice. The loopers choose drum gun, even though it should have been the planes, then they get dropped outside of the vault after while it closes once more, with the drum gun being freed on the loop again. But at this exact same time, the final fight between Ice King and the Fire King happens. The Fire King erupts his volcano hitting retail, tilted and most importantly the polar peak. As these two kings and their minions fight each other leading to the Ice King being on top, defeating his former Fire Knight, freezing him with the eternal ice under the deep waters of the island. But the damage was already done.
While the volcano erupts, everyone outside the loop escapes into the vaults around the map to protect themselves, Peely and Jones dropping into the same vault together. It was all really fun for them at first until they run out of food, and a hundred years pass from this moment. Jonesy turns his friend Peel into a smoothie for survival and wearing his peel as a cape. That's messed up! Drinking peel actually makes Bunker Jonesy see visions of the future. Visions of especially a monster and mech fight. As I said, seeing future is connected to the spirit energy, so by drinking peel, you consume some of his soul to lead into the connection with the spirit energy. Some people finally find and free them from the vault, and Jones gets to see the island after a hundred years. Welcome to the the future. The volcano's eruption damaged the island a lot, so in this 100 years, Singularity took over to fix all the damages, but even evolving retail and tilted into futuristic forms, all powered by a cable running through the closed vault, using the zero points energy to run the entire island's technology. While then, the IO takes over the leftovers of the volcano, using it as a power plant to evolve themselves. Singularity also speaks with the IO, agreeing to help them in future when they need her because they will. The Fire King is striking Polar Peak with Volcano was because of yet another dangerous collection of Ice King within there, the biggest one. Polar Peak after a strike makes it impossible for the Ice King to stop the melting awakening a massive monster within, which at first, we only saw the eye of it. The monster breaks free, crushing the cable fueling the energy of the cities, as it hides within the waters of the island. You can even see Polar Peak stuck on his back poking outside the water. The imagined order at first was not worried about this monster crushing and killing everyone, but Singularity brings up how it could be planning to go for the zero point. The monster's eyes last time even looking through this vault's walls. Imagine Order thinks of building a doomsday device for killing all the living beings including the devourer on the island, but Singularity talks of a better idea, that being her building an entire massive mech to challenge this monster. And interestingly, the only person who can pilot this mech to victory is the great greatest pilot of all time, Paradigm. Currently captured and imprisoned by the IO at the same prison Origin used to be kept in. IO goes to her explaining what's going on and either Paradigm helps IO killing the monster, or they will go with their doomsday device plan instead, to protect the people on the island and not letting them die. And to protect the zero point, Paradigm has no choice but to accept helping the IO. The Paradigm is not allowed to wear her own seven suits since they are too extremely powerful. So Singularity gives her one of her own suits and Paradigm modifies it to fit the design of a true Seven member and protect her. Now begins the greatest kaiju duel.
monster was too powerful, nearly defeating the mech, so Paradigm saw the only solution into not letting the Devourer consume the zero point, being borrowing big amounts of the orb's energy, cracking it and overloading the mech with it, leading to us seeing how all this time before the monster was even revealed, Singularity already knew of it. Preparing the sword the mech would use to defeat. And isn't it interesting how she went exactly for a mech, making Paradigm be the only one who could control it, forcing Ayo to free her. While Singularity is the guardian of the Zero Point, just like the Seven are, she is definitely a secret helper of the Seven, one acting to be part of the Ayo but more of a double agent. For now, Paradigm kills the monster, doing a one handed victory floss, then flying far into space, trying her best not to let the Ayo capture her once more. Paradigm in space sees the Ice Moon and goes to it, because she sees this as her only chance of escaping Ayo. Around that same time, Ice King seeing the monster has returned also returns to the Ice Moon, angered at himself failing to protect his collection. So he chooses to create an eternal extreme snowstorm on the entire Ice Moon that would kill everything on it, even the Ice King's living collection. But Paradigm can survive thanks to the massive mech protecting her. The Ayo cannot. Them following Paradigm into this moon would destroy their spaceships in no time. So Paradigm succeeds escaping Io. The zero point is left cracked and unbalanced after the fight and it only gets worse. Sitting to the zero point not be able to handle time well, pausing time or even transforming some things on the island into their past forms like Dusty. As the zero point begins to pause time, Jonesy gets lucky to be sent through a realm beyond time and space, one which in it things from past and future from many realities exist within it, all at the same time. Through this realm, the zero point pulls in many things including yet another seven meteor. But this time, instead of that being the visitor, it's another member of the seven, the scientist. The meteor gets paused in time on the air, while the IO is not too worried about the zero point going wild, since it would just reset the entire universe to be a fully healthy zero point again. The scientist will not stand quiet here. He takes the lead of saving us all by leaving his pod and taking over a dusty container building and evolving it into his research lab. At this moment, the IO who gained access to a technology they would make in the future being the brutes, they send those after the scientist to find and kill him, while being 
being hunted down, the scientists build these reef-generating devices, which bring locations from other realities into the island, even places from Gotham and Borderlands. The scientist creates a connection with the other seven members through this, gathering the material he needs and even finding his own voice logs in them, talking about him coming to the loop and being worried to be turned muted like all the other loopers. The scientist then gets sick of the mech, so not only he takes one to build himself a new warrior suit out of, but also researching the mechs, trying to find a weak point. He does find one being a virus he could download into the system of the mechs that would make them blow up on impact. Since they drop like meteors from the sky, that means that the mech problem has been solved. As the IO fails to take him down, the scientist has built yet another rocket like the one in season 4, beginning the end and the reset of the omniverse. Rocket brings in six more through these rifts created by these devices. One of those seven rockets was either on autopilot or another person was helping the seven at this moment. Since Paradigm right now is stuck on the ice moon, the rockets keep opening rifts on the meteor, reaching sonic speed and freeing the meteor from being stuck in time, then taking it right onto the top of the zero point as one rocket sacrifices itself, going inside the zero points to prepare things for the meteor's strike. A strike they would hope it would reset the universe without harming any living beings, and even to break the loop. The end is here, all sucked through a black hole and the omniverse is safely resetted. But sadly not how the Seven wanted it to go. The loop does not end.
If a big bang creation lives on once more as the zero point is fully healed, and our double sided islands have been reforged together by the zero point through the same pieces of the last map but evolved, this also causes some locations of the chapter 1 map to be sent to the bottom flip side, which now in this chapter it is on top instead, while also locations from the chapter 2 to be sent into the chapter 1 instead. The double sided islands have been mixed up because of the black hole. With this, the seven have gone deactivated once more while also they have fully taken over the chapter 1 map. But on this flip side which is the focus for chapter 2, the imagined order finally gets to have full control on every single detail of the island, even containing the zero points within their own base called the bridge, a place where they fully manage the loop from, then experimenting with the zero points and doing whatever they want with it. Even the infinity blade of the ice king's collection was stolen from him studied within this place, as they study a tiny cube here as well. Well, one of the imagined order's experiments being them wanting to do a test run on one of their unique doomsday device ideas. Since Midas is the lead on the doomsday research group, he takes the charge on this one. But as a mastermind, he has much more reasons for this choice. Before coming into the island, Midas first searches for three people who would be perfect to create a new faction of his with. One called the Shadow. The lucky three who get to be chosen are a living legend and assassin, the Burning Wolf, a mad scientist scientist who turned himself into Black Ooze named Chaos Agent, who after being chosen Midas even helps him build a much better suit to contain his ooze within. Then in the end we have Sierra, one who avenges her past through the shadows. These three together are the first shadows, first members of this faction. Midas builds this faction in secret away from Ayo and brings them all into the island. The mission of Shadow is to begin war with Ghost, a very old faction of Ayo which also is led by Midas. So why would Midas lead two factions and cause a war among them? Well, that is very much a Palpatine move, a distraction. Midas being the mastermind needed a way to distract Ayo, so they don't get to pay much attention into what Midas is doing. This is all because just like the Seven did, Midas has started to feel untrusting towards Ayo. How they're not the same Ayo and they're beginning to get corrupted. His entire family feels this way too. So Midas begins this war by pushing this button. Midas's trust being broken is why he plans to betray Ayo by causing a massive damage against them. Using the doomsday device he was tasked to build, modifying it to his advantage. The doomsday device being built by his daughter in his room underground of agency. While anyone who managed to figure out Midas's betrayal plan, they got personally killed by him, and their mass collected and turned into gold. But don't worry, they all like links were killed while being thrown in the loop, so Midas did not fully kill his agents. They will just respawn and have to escape the loop again. Agent Peely has even been spying within the room of every agent, especially Midas, probably giving information to the imagined order. For now, the war among the Ghost and Shadow gets crazier. Brutus joins Shadow, Sky joining Ghost, T and Tina Shadow, while their locations change design based on that too. Then Meowsos joins Shadow, but this time because he was kicked out of Midas's yacht called Marigold, named after her, yes. Kicked out by none other than Deadpool taking over Midas's yacht and completely messing this place up living under verse everywhere. This was just a teaser to what was coming really soon. From this moment, Jules finally finishes building his father the doomsday device and even building the cyclo suit for Midas to wear for controlling the device and for Midas to not just use the zero point for charging the device but also the golden energy of his by the help of Oro's staff. Everything is finally ready for doomsday. Stay.
device controlled by Midas fights against the storm because he's trying to free all the loopers from the loop. At first the device fails fighting but Midas does not give up. He keeps fighting and actually wins leading to everyone finally seeing the real truth. We all have been stuck in a loop controlled by agents of IO, one being Jones, and they watch every moment and events of the map within this bridge. Everything is, uh, starting to stabilize here. Nothing seems to be... What the... Are you even... Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Can you... Can you hear me? Hear me? Hear me? Hear me? We were so close to finally escaping the loop. Once the zero points power and loop are much stronger to easily be defeated. Once the seven failed trying to take it down and now Midas. Midas who in his cyclo picture. A cube can be seen while a cube lightning is what breaks his device in the end of the event. Our first teasers into last reality's massive interest into Midas. The storm is here for revenge by creating a tsunami which at first was being held back by the storm shield. But the shield fails keeping it contained. Everything has been drowned underwater except some locations floating thanks to the technology of the no sweat insurance. The super rich insurance company of the island. While Midas has now become part of the loop, being eaten by a shark within the loop right away. Then someone secretly collecting Midas's reboot cards within the loop here. While in the absence of Midas, Jules is here to fix up the island. As the waters of the island keeps getting lower and lower, dumped into space, revealing Coral Castle, the home of 
of the fish people. Then Jules and Marigold's being allowed to work within IO and kept under control not to turn like their father did. Regarding Midas, he manages to escape the loop and goes into full hiding from everyone, especially IO, until he comes up with a new plan for going against the Imagine Order. The one who took the shark hit and looper Midas's card also during the last season. He stole Midas's chair, taking it by a boat, then a car into a house. And the golden chair was so heavy it crushed the floor, dropping a level lower in the house. This chair is now given by the mysterious person to no sweat insurance, so they keep it protected from the water, until the mysterious person's plans for this chair comes in action really soon. Then since Ghost vs Shadow was all just a fake war, they both go back to becoming factions under the control of IO. The war has ended. While ago in Season X, the Black Hole's creation caused a mad titan to sense the energy of the Zero Point, while he was flying with his new herald Thor, trying to get strong enough for defeating the Black Winter. Galactus sensing the Zero Point shockwave coming through a giant rift. He chooses to go through it so he can consume whatever energy there is on the other side of it. Consuming it making him the strongest of all, unstoppable, and never in need of consuming planets anymore. Thor of course hates this, so he flies to our world faster to warn us of what's coming. He then confronts some loopers are scared of who he is. So a fight begins and through it the loop solely is taking over Thor's mind too. Why the loop did not mute and wipe out Thor's memory right away? That's because super powerful god level beings have some levels of resistance against the zero points and the loop's energy. Thor's memory still slowly gets wiped out so he chooses to get help from the Bifrost, a team of reality 616 marvel beings who we need gets yoinked and teleport into the island, getting extremely confused of what is going on. The Imagined Order comes in to check what's going on too, and Thor explains for both of them and Marvel characters everything. All set gives Iron Man ideas of how exactly to defeat Galactus saving us all, so he perfects his ideas going through it drawn out. The start of the idea being to create rift devices similar to the ones that scientists built, but this time many of them, causing a rift energy circle and then a giant chunk of land teleported onto the island. That chunk is from 616 reality and the part of a Stark Industries and Iron Man's house is all on it, even some other Iron Man suits, also taking the island's whiplashes and evolving them into Iron Man whiplashes. Not only this arrives, but after many other chunks from Reality 616 like Black Panther with this arrive, at the Stark Industries he uses his technology combining it with battle buses and taking help from people like She-Hulk or Doctor Doom to create these. That's right there is exactly Iron Man's plan, and for the final touch he has the Imagine Order to let him mess with the zero points now. Meanwhile the bus is being built. The mysterious person who stole Midas's chair has finally shown us why. This person is revealed to be a witch who uses Midas's reboot card and a reboot van to create a snapshot of Midas, since reboot vans do not bring back the original dead people in the loop, but instead those reboot cards have information regarding the dead loopers. Then with it the vans create a snapshot of them, then using Midas's chair and witchcraft to make Making it float. The witch turns this Midas snapshot into a corrupted shadow Midas, one with the power to now corrupt souls of the dead commanding them, definitely created to be grabbed by the last reality joining them, since again last reality wants Midas badly from the cube on the cyclo promotion, to the cube lightning to the last reality messing with Midas much more, even in future. For now he gets handled by the Marvel team and IO. While Iron Man creates this boss, Galactus keeps getting closer and closer in this guys and finally coming.
look like someone who needs a jetpack. There you go. We gotta stop Galactus from eating the zero point. You are free, right? With the Zero Point fighting to stop Galactus from consuming it, we get sucked into In Between once again, teleported into one of those Iron Man battle buses, but also seeing the final touch of his, and why he needed the Zero Point. Okay, so I took the liberty of tinkering with your reality a bit. It's really no big deal. You can thank me later. I hacked your, t I hacked your time loop thingy, uh, made a few billion battle bus clones, and then turned them all into very pop. We, we need to get Galactus to eat as many buses as possible before he's down with the zero. If everything goes right, it'll open a portal and send him back where he came from. Hey, look, attack drones. Cute. You know, I was hoping we'd have an excuse to try out the battle bus's laser cannons. Give him a try. control these bosses flying to Galactus shooting his minions, while Iron Man, Thor and finally Wolverine do their best to protect the bosses reaching Galactus. Oh, that you see there is Astro World. It is a theme park planet of Travis Scott brought to Reality Zero from a festival reality. For the most fun concert I've ever seen, my man Galactus thinking he is unbeatable and being way too hungry sucks off all the billions of the battle bosses. Galactus has been defeated and rifted back to Reality 616 as a dead corpse, while the Imagine Order thanks and throws all Marvel characters back to 616 with him as well. Now Dio has to deal with the huge mess Marvel Reality left them. did it. We're still here. Yeah, but the zero point is exposed. You have to go in. Oh, come on. Last thing we need is another snapshot of me inside the loop. No. The last thing we need is someone escaping the loop. You need to get in there and fix it. Understood, ma'am. I'm on it. And do not draw the attention of the seven Jones. Are you there? I just need to stabilize the zero point and reseal the bridge, but not let anyone escape. <laughs> Easy, right? Okay. Locate the best hunters across all the eyes. Signatures triangulated and defined. Execute. Nice pattern work. Uh. 
The zero point being messed up by Iron Man and Galactus has gone unstable and revealed to all Looper and people on the island. Galactus even taking a zero shot piece with himself back to Reality 616. Doctor Stone calls up Jones to once again send him up for fixing this mess, warning him to do not do anything regarding the seven. That's a no no. John Jones goes to the bridge, which now has a massive hole in the middle of it, being extremely damaged by Galactus pulling the zero point out of this place, creating this huge hole. He then makes the zero point open portals towards the realities he needs for his job. Taking a rift gun with himself too, getting pulled towards the zero point like this because of its now being on the island. Here we see the whole world flipping, our first ever teaser to there being another island flipped right under us. Jones gets sent to the reality where Alexa is from, recruiting her as a hunter, then using the rift gun to take Alexa to the island. Rift gun which also protects the people around it from getting affected by the loop, not letting you lose memories and all. From here, Jones keeps using the Rift Gun, going back and forth between other realities and the island. While every time Jones travels to a new reality, he records a reality log for Dr. Ason to listen to. He goes to a jungled reality, recruiting a shape-shifting Maeve. Futuristic ish one getting Riss as a hunter, rifting to the mega reality, recruiting Condor, an evil spirit who served an empire, granting them their revenge wishes, an empire which to me has to be the river guard. Then he going to another one of the five realities, this time the deserted one, recruiting the undefeated champion Menace. Then Mancake, a former Peace Syndicate member. And finally, you can't go after recruiting bounty hunters without the greatest one of all time, Din Djarin Mandalorian. While Mando also brings in his cute little baby, the hunters for the moment get their own homes to settle in while working for the IO. Jones tasks all these hunters to protect the zero points and not allow a single person to make contact with it. Why? Because if any one touches the zero point while it is not focused on a single reality. Zero point will turn them into billion pieces, sending each piece into a different reality. So the bounty hunters kill you in the loop themselves, since in the loop you just get respawned and not fully die forever. These hunters are not enough and much more of the most powerful beings are needed. So Jones keeps traveling realities, getting first Kratos, God of War as a hunter, then Master Chief from Halo, the two rival huge gaming characters both as bounty Bounty Hunters. Impossible. Jones even going after many more hunters like Flash, Tron, Snake Eyes, and these. Jones brings all of them to Reality Zero, opening many rift doors on the island. So these bounty hunters do the job Jones has set. He has traveled back and forth between realities 88 times, opening these rifts leading to the zero point going chaos mode ready to implode. This at first seems to be Jones's fault, but it is not. Jones is the only way to save everyone on the island and the loopers being to go exactly against what the son told him, thinking of contacting the seven to help out. Dr. Son finding this out removes all permissions of John Jones to connect into any Imagine Order files and resources, so he cannot access the seven secret information. This makes Jones feel betrayed and emotionally going crazy. Reality log doesn't even matter. What's the point of recording these logs if you're not going to listen? We've lost control of the zero point. Do, do you get what that means? You must not because you're doing nothing. I've dedicated my life to the Order. I've given everything. And for what? To just sit back and watch reality end? That's not 
who we are. At least it's not who I am. Not anymore. This is Agent Jones requesting access to all materials related to the Seven. Oh, great! Okay, if you're not gonna give me what I need, I'm just gonna have to take it. The IO doing nothing because they wanted Jones to make the zero points go crazy. This would lead into the zero points imploding doing yet another black hole to reset the loop and the island. So all the mess fixes itself, as the people in the loop would be killed by this. Then the IO would just escape into a safe place until the island is rebuilt again. John Jones realizing how this was IO's plan finally gets how he's working for the wrong people. So he quits in his way to become a hero saving us all. Jones. throws his rift gun into the zero points calculated to bring one of the seven in the leader foundation he is needed to help him fix the zero point but the seven do not know that jones is betraying the io and they hate the imagine order so no reason to trust me but oh no hang on let's talk let's talk i can get you to geno and the sisters. His name's the Stop Foundation because his main focus is to get rid of Geno for good, ending the IO. While the Sisters Foundation means the snapshot ones working for Geno, the Foundation agrees to help Jones heal the zero point to save everyone. And after, Jones must show him where Geno is. So it begins. That's our ticket home. Do not make me regret this. And get that looper ready. We don't have much time. Looper? You again? Foundation flying trying to calm down the zero point but things have gone too chaotic. He tells Jones to use his rift gun and close up as many rift doors as possible to help the zero point gain its energy back. In the middle of these reality waves happen. These waves can rewrite and manipulate everything turning objects or even beings into completely different things. One of them even turning Jones into a rift butterfly. So instead of him we now have to help the foundation. Closing rift doors as Jones uses his powers to teleport port us closer to the doors and after we're done zero points blooms that's the last one i think we got it The beauty of creation represented in three main energies of the omniverse, the foundation trying to balance them out once more but he fails. They all go red and unbalanced colors as foundation has only one choice left, and we need to be there with him.
need to seal off the zero point and overload the device. Overload the device? I'll be trapped in the loop! We'll both have to find our way back. No matter what happens, do not give up. I will find you, and you will tell me everything. You have my word! Here we go! The Foundation locks himself up with the Zero Point as Jones now has turned into a looper, both of them sacrificing themselves for our lives. Chromium brought in by Foundation to the island, creating the Spire, so the Zero Point gets to heal back up without anyone getting access to its energy. The island has grown wild, so must we. This Chromium and Aspire come from the same place the last reality are at. The nothing among realities. The Chromium seems to be last reality tech, which the IO have been using against the last reality themselves. Sending Aspire Guardians there so they try and never let the last reality inside the reality zero. But now those Guardians because of Foundation and Chromium are here to contain the zero point. The Aspire Guardians kill anyone who gets close to the Chromium because if you get in contact with the darkness energy flowing through this unbreakable material, the nothing will gain access to your soul, corrupting it and fully taking over you. The Spire Guardians can wear Chromium without getting corrupted, because they're set to use soul energy as flames protecting them from the darkness. One fifth of a man has been studying cubes and aspires for many, many years. Raz. He takes advantage of Chromium finally being here to find out about the great power it offers. Raz manages to kill the Spire Guardians, making contact with the Spire, gaining the great power he was interested in. What's this extra? Dream Doctor's power comes with a great cost of his soul getting ripped out of his body, and the body fully controlled by the nothing. While this was happening, the Imagine Order opens a sideways rift to the Gotham City, bringing in Batman to the loop. They need Batman to figure out something. In the loop, Batman losing his memory uses his instincts which help him know that Catwoman is actually an ally. They try together and figure out how to leave the loop. He manages to make Catwoman escape while the IO sends the Snake Eyes to fight him. So Batman and spends more time trying to leave the loop until Io is ready for it. Deathstroke is also recruited by Io, and he's actually the one who pushed Batman into this rift. Getting a device from Io that once activated in the loop, it brings Deathstroke outside the loop right away. Since Batman does not remember him, he manipulates Batman to help him and these escape loopers out. Batman figures out how these bunkers are connected to whoever controls the island, so he finds a way in using the energy of the Zero Point. Discovering much about the Imagine Order and in the and reaching the bridge, which currently there is a massive tower in the middle being the spire material itself. Here the zero point is waiting within that tower to be freed. So eternal voyager excited rushing to reach the zero point energy to cause chaos on all other realities. He is powerful enough to break the unbreakable chromium, revealing the zero point within jumping in it. But the zero point was not focused on a single reality while he did, instead all billions of realities, meaning he got turned into billion pieces dying and each piece sent to a different reality. Now Batman figures out how the Imagine Order uses vibrational energy, sending them to the zero point with these panels. So the zero point focuses on the reality with that specific wavelength. Each reality having a unique vibration wave, which can be sampled through the living beings through those realities. So Batman first connects the zero point to the Imagine Order tech again, to make the panels and all work once more. Then he goes to the loop again, getting to see his and Catwoman's snapshots, while taking Harley Quinn using her vibrational energy so the portal opens back to their home world. Oh, and the bad news, we also lose fish sticks. <laughs> Batman realizing the zero point from the spire and connecting it back to the IO's tech is exactly why the Imagine Order brought him onto the island. Batman was manipulated to help the IO. Now back to Raz. The extreme power he has gained easily crushes anyone trying to stop him. While his body and the spire are used to open a portal to bring in something dark and super dangerous. Then, the rest of them showed up. Never before have we seen anything quite like this.
One of the last reality alien UFOs has made it to the island thanks to rats. It exposed us powerfully trying to capture the zero point. But the zero point is not there because of how Batman freed it before the aliens arrived. So the alien invasion begins. Them taking over or even growing their babies at some locations or getting addicted to cat food. Then some people on the island even start thinking that the aliens are good, while the Imagine Order is the one we need to go against. When Batman went back to his home was before the UFO, it was revealed how he was chosen to be manipulated by IO because of Lex Luthor and Batman who laughs. Them trying to help IO out. So in return, the Imagine Order helps them out by opening a sideways rift once more within Gotham. One which throws foundation who was stuck within the zero point for months right into Gotham waters as well. Him slip under the waters of Gotham all out of energy. Meanwhile on the island, alien abductors get released abducting loopers many times to research them. Jones at this moment use cow suits to hide from IO, leading to him getting abducted by the aliens too. Then after a little, aliens even abducting locations like Coral Castle and Slurpee. The IO are scared of these aliens and they know how the technology of them are much superior to IO. Dr. Osama still brings up the railgun, the strongest weapons of theirs which can easily destroy the smaller UFOs. The Imagine Order even steals Rick and Morty from their reality, forcing them to help the IO in the war against the aliens, if they wanna go back to their home. For the mothership, Dr. Wilson watching the aliens abduct locations gets an idea of creating nukes that use the mothership's own dark cube energy, attaching them under the ground of Corny Complex so the mothership abducts the location and bombs explode within. At this moment, there are spies within IO which try to warn the aliens regarding this. One of those imposters among us is Joey, an alien disguised as a human working within IO to sabotage them, while the second one Maeve who starts to believe in the cause of the aliens, dreaming about it being manipulated by the nothing, giving the aliens information they need. Imagine Order finds both of them and takes care of the spies, this exactly being why the imposters game mode was made. Now the Imagine Order is in action building the nukes while trying to figure out how to base the aliens into a stealing corny complex. Meanwhile that's happening, aliens use one of their abductors and attract all loopers into this, using Ariana Grande concert as a bait. Ariana being a rift goddess opens a rift door, taking us to the aliens scanning our memories, which there they see many moments of history of Fortnite. But one of the moments is not showing our history. The aliens through us see the future of cubes landing on this island very soon. Just the teaser showing us how they know more than we think. After the concert, the aliens are done scanning us, releasing the loopers, while Dr. Stone figures out to put cat food on Corny Complex, lots of it, while annoying the aliens so they come to abduct Corny. And it actually works! The location is being abducted with nukes attached to it, while Dr. Stone needs us to be abducted too so we can activate the bombs in there. All of us and Corny get abducted and we get thrown right into the alien jails, waiting and following Stone's commands trusting her.
Many important items abducted by the aliens gets brought right into here and we get to see so much Midas related things. His chair, his gold, his golden pillow statues and so much all abducted by the aliens. As I have brought up before, the last reality cube on Cyclo's picture. The cube lightning hitting the device. And the last reality creating a corrupted snapshot Midas for themselves. They are really into Midas, showing this character's importance. Now we reach where is needed to activate the bombs, watching the stolen cornea and nukes be taken in. We begin activating the bombs until a huge secret gets revealed. We destroy the doctor's energy within the cube using light while activating the bombs. And here, Dr. Stone betrays all of us. You played your part, now I have to play mine. We are fighting a war in which we are hopelessly outgunned. I won't bring you home. Not if there is a chance that thing can make it back to the island. Over. And out. Leaving us to die in the mothership once again proving how the IO are not to be trusted. The Seven, Midas and Jones, all these people were right to betray Imagine Order. But while all hope seems to be lost, since the Zero Point has created us living beings, there is much light energy existing within us. So we channel the light through ourselves and fill the empty cube with it, creating a blue light cube, taking us up with itself to reveal one of the craziest moments in the Fortnite story. The single cube we were terrified of has now been revealed to be one of thousands.
We are now at the future which got shown to us while the memories got scanned. Many cubes have made it onto the island while even one golden cube. These cubes begin corrupting the land, bringing in monsters to kill everyone while even massive ones called caretakers. The cubes on the island open bubbles or even some sideways rifts, which bring in an alternate sideways dimension into the island, one fully cursed. The golden cube goes to each of the other cubes having a smex with them and making lots of babies. I'm not joking, that actually happened. Then the gold cube caused a cube which has been abused under Kevolution energy since the beginning of chapter 2. And this cube is our own Kevin all the way from chapter 1. But from the floating island that was brought in at season X, he does not make babies with the golden cube. No smash for him. All the cubes met at the center of the island where the zero point is at. And there arrives the queen of the cubes through the golden cube. how everything we have ever been through, everything we ever thought was true, it was all just part of her play. Meaning that yes, the cube coming to the island is striking the ice moon so the monster forces the mech to be made, leading to the zero points being revealed so the black hole happens. So Galactus senses the zero points getting in, damaging the zero point again, and Foundation forced to bring in Chromium Aspire so Raz connects right into it, bringing in an alien mothership through, and us blowing up the mothership so the cubes will spread around the map faster. Every single thing that has happened from chapter 1 till this very moment she confirms it was all planned and manipulated by the last reality and her. We just played a part in her little game. She even talks about the IOS fight against the 7 being in vain, teasing how the last reality will be controlling future seasons too. They know everything. That's because as I have said the last reality connected themselves to the spirit realm, getting to use it to see visions of the future then building a border around it using the sideways dimension. This all were actually explained in this very season by Dark Jonesy, the one who wants our help so he can once again connect into the spirit world, so he can see visions of the future, what he sees being two futures, one of them bright while the other very dark. Two future outcomes because the last reality all this time are trying to alter and change outcomes of the future to their liking. For now, the cube queen using all the cubes creates a cube town pyramid at the center on top of the zero point, while on top she gathers all energy. Once she's gathering energy, a space chimp is helping us out to create more mix and weapons with our money, so we can use to fight the cubes, but the Imagine Order knows they have already lost, giving up fully trying to escape before they die. And on Foundation's side, once awakened, he gets into a fight with Batman, leading to them figuring out how they're both the good guys, while it gets revealed that Batman who laughs and Lex Luthor in return of helping Gaio, got ready to arrive at our island through this rift. But Batman and Foundation are here to stop that. The Foundation throwing a huge one into the space, trying to return into the island and accidentally bring bringing Batman who laughs through it with him. Fighting him in the loop as Batman who laughs nearly destroys Foundation's visor with his dark metal but Foundation kills him, becoming the last person alive once the storm has fully closed so he gets freed from the loop. Once free, using the device with Batman to close the sideways rift, and then in search to find and save John Jones as he promised, while Batman who laughs keeps his memories talking because the dark metal around his head blocks all zero point energy from controlling him. He is having time of his life non-stop killing till his plan goes in action, that's being to reach the zero point so he can fully crops and destroy every reality with his dark dimension. The rest of Batman who laughs the story should happen in the next Fortnite Batman comics. Now the queen is ready to tear the worlds apart.
one hope away, another rises or falls. The reveal of how the Imagine Order has found and captured John Jones, taken on this device to torture and completely wipe out his memory clean by Dr. Stone and Gunner. But Foundation is right on time to keep his promise. Impossible. I watched you die. I got over it. You! <laughs> you came back for me. You promised me, Jeno. He saves Jones, killing Gunner here as well, but Gunner is fine. He will just get to respawn soon. Together, this to save us all from the end. Okay, so what's the plan? <laughs> Great plan. Shoot anyone who tries to stop me. Tries to stop you from what? Taking us to the other side. What? Oh, I am deep in this. Yeah, not gonna happen. Did you maybe speed it up? You are faster? Help. How is this not helping? Main console, gyro system, disable it. On it! How do I do that? <laughs> Figure it out! <laughs> Figure it out, he said. Oh, got it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's done. Initiate phase two. Looper spotted. That is our way in. Hold them off. All right, everyone, fall back. Area secured. See you on the other side. Everyone follow me to the bridge. We'll be safe there. Don't worry, guys. I'll move the bus by myself. It's right up here, and I will give you a water break soon. Heads up! I know another way. Guys! What a day, am I right? Careful, edges are hot. Rotation at 30 degrees. This is the epicenter of the island, you guys. We're safe here. Warning. Rotation at 45 degrees. <laughs> That's the last one! We did it! Where's my gun? Okay, I... may have dropped it. In the zero point. Ugh. Why does she make me keep saving you? That she who keeps making foundation to save John Jones should be Singularity. The one who must be a double agent within IO and not truly helping them out. She sees something special within Jones. Now while the seven here want to take the zero point away from the IO, a caretaker ruins their mission. Well, what about that? Be ready to swim.
Leon Jones turned off the gyro system of the island, making it flip to the island originally on top. This saving us all as well. The island flipping makes the energy beam fueling this massive tear in the sky, hits the water and cause a massive explosion breaking the beam's connection from the rift, making the cube queen also be pushed back into the nothing's reality as the portal closes. But even this was part of their plan and not all a fail. We are saved from them, for now. I suppose I owe you an explanation. We've all been through a lot the last few years, and there's much more you don't even remember. You've all fought the good fight, but until we set the zero point free, we'll be facing threats, threats like the last reality, and worse. There will be no escaping it. That's why I need your help to destroy the imagined order. As long as they're exploiting the zero point, Everything is in danger. With your help, we can free ourselves from this place and leave the moon for good. We can all go home. has flipped and chapter 1 once more on top. As the 7 fully control it this time with even a massive foundation statue at their hidden base sanctuary. The scientist getting jealous for it asking for his own statue. In the middle of this Spider-Man and Daily Bugle buildings get rifted into the island too. Right in the middle of the season 8 volcano. The 7 at this moment are in terrible relationship. Origin and Foundation look at Paradigm as a traitor for working with IO. The scientist loving Paradigm goes against these two saying how they need Paradigm. The imagined agreeing with him while she keeps annoying Origin breaking rules. Visitor! Well, he just follows orders. He's a good boy. The team really needs someone to bring them back together and that turns to be Jones himself. One who tells us how terrified the IO always has been of the Seven. IO sees the strong bonds between the Seven the exact reason why they're always unstoppable. Yet now that bond is broken and soon the final war with IO begins. The IO uses their drills getting on the island as they also carve out inside of a huge mountain creating their main command base within, preparing to go in war with the Seven so they can take back control of the island once more, while a great rumbling can be heard from underground sinking some places as the Zero War begins.
Dr. Rasson activates a device which jams the technology that allows people on the island to build, as they absolutely crush the Seven in their first attack, taking over 90% of the map, sending their blimps to fully control their captured locations, and tasking Lynx to assassinate the Seven as well. While she's a huge fan of the Seven tech design, so she gets inspired building a new suit as a panther this time. Lynx was actually married to Meow Souls, doing some interesting things to make a baby kit, now becoming parents who soon will be divorced. So Kids gets really sad going to get help from his aunt, Meowsicles. Her getting these two back together. Yeah, I know, that's really cursed. <laughs> now the seven get back up from Reality 616, the return of the Marvel heroes. Before this war's beginning, the seven, with the help of Spider Man and Loopers, attacks Ayo's middle base trying to reach the bridge. The seven, knowing here how they're not powerful enough for the upcoming war, visit her bringing up how they could use the mech that Paradigm piloted as an advantage. And Origin has gathered information on very exactly this mech currency is. Getting this information the last time the seven were at the bridge checking the IO secret files. But these files show the extreme snowstorm on that moon. One which could even destroy the seven's armor killing them. They have no chance of getting there except Spider-Man thinks of getting help from Storm and Thor, his two friends who have the power to control storms. So they could calm down the snowstorm for the seven to get on the moon. But traveling to 616 reality would be needed for this. The seven at the moment have a rift gun with two charges left in it, ready to travel into 616. But even if we get the Storm and Thor, the mech has been extremely beaten up and the seven don't have enough time to fix and charge it up while fighting the IO. Origin comes up with a solution, that being him getting reminded of a zero point shard which Galactus while ago broke, and it was sent with him to reality 616, leading to the seven planning for Jones, Imagine and Spider-Man to travel into 616, then use one of the Rift Gun charges to bring in Marvel heroes, especially Thor and Storm. Storm, rifting them into the island so they help the seven, as the other rift gunshot is needed to take these three back into the island, which means that the third shot is needed to take these three into 616, but the gun only has two shots left. Because of it, Foundation helps out to take this tree into the bridge through the IO sewers. Here we even learn how the zero point keeps generating water on the island, which older water on it keeps getting dumped into space. The water on the island is always fresh and clean. Now our heroes make it to the bridge, which that turns on IO's alarms, making Dr. Stone and Gunner come in to kill them all. Stone here tells Jones how his actual boss Geno probably doesn't even know he exists. Poor guy. As they all fight each other until Jones makes the zero point focus on 616. Imagine Jones and Spider-Man jump in while a Split shoots a web to close up the portal, leaving Foundation all alone. Making a Stone and Gunner do a little wombo combo on Foundation. Oh my god! That's one Foundation vs Gunner win here, then a Gunner win here, and now two Gunner wins. Will these two ever get a final duel? Our heroes have now traveled into 616 reality. This being the first Rift Gun reality travel of a Split messes his insides up, showing that it takes some time to get used to traveling realities. The Imagine's crazy at right away goes beating up Captain Marvel as Spud stops this fight, taking them all into the Avengers meeting within a dead body of a Celestial. There they all agree to choose Marvel heroes who get rifted into the island, so they join and help the seven, the ones who already have experience with the island thanks to Nexus War, especially Iron Man being chosen to return once more, as they join in fight helping the seven slowly take back the island for their own, with the loopers helping as well. When the battle finishes, Foundation, Scientists, Iron Man, Storm and Thor, all of them leaving the army that fights against the IO and instead flying towards the ice moon. Origin and Captain Marvel now in charge of this army. Iron Man and Foundation also get super interested into each other's suits. Tony Stark even coming up with the armor bros. I love it! While this group flies into the ice moon, Spud, Jones and Imagine go to get the help of Wolverine for hunting down the Zero Shard, because Wolverine is one of the greatest hunters with a great sense of a smell. Wolverine first says no, but seeing Imagine makes him change his mind and help out. The Imagine tracks down the shot finding its energy within the Wakanda, going there not being allowed in at first as a big fight among them and big cat robot things happen, as Wolverine's body explodes because of Jones, and this fight ends by Shuri coming in to see what's going on. Shuri knowing Spud and Wolverine allows them in Wakanda, so they can try and find the Zero Shard. There they even talk about how Vibranium and Zero Point seem to have some connections with each other as well. Wolverine's great sense of a smell finds out how the shard has been stolen from here, Shuri getting ideas of who 
might have stolen it, so taking us to the jungle of dinos. They're taking ambushed by the hybrids. The dragonish lizard ninjas, former minions of prisoner. They attack this group, getting killed as one survives, but none of them know lizard language. Yet the Spider-Man thinks maybe this humanoid lizard guys could be working with a villain he knows. Stegron the Dino Man. The heroes go to the Savage Land for finding this dino, as our other group reaches the ice moon. Thor and a storm together calming down the storms, allowing the others to land more like crash into the moon, finding the huge mech and shockingly for them, also finding Paradigm weakened within it but alive. Paradigm is annoyed how long it took the seven to search for her, and gets even more disappointed finding out how the seven were here for the mech and not to rescue her. Making Paradigm even more disappointed, Foundation is ready to execute her, if Paradigm does not give him a good reason why she helps the IO a while ago. Paradigm smacks Foundation hands and explains how she did the right thing, fighting the monster so the people on the island stay alive. Then Paradigm points out how the Seven need her to win against the IO, her even being the one who sends the Seven a blueprint of a missile launcher she designed. That thing easily taking care of IO's tanks and blimps crushing them. The scientist being in love of course agrees with her. The Foundation has no choice but having to let the Paradigm in the Seven again, as the Seven now together build a base on the frozen moon. Paradigm points out how even if they fix the mech there is nothing to fuel it up. Iron Man bringing up how the other team will take care of that finding the zero shard. Zero shard which the team hunting it down currency is taking a rest. This rest leading to a small bond between Shuri and Jones. Then a much much bigger one between these two. The Imagine talks about daddy issues to Wolverine and yeah they fall for each other and then this happens. That's right there is no fan fiction. It's real. And it got so much worse. Spider-Man saw it. All of it. Our heroes are now awake and ready to find the shard, finding out how it is currently in the hands of the High Evolutionary, as a stake run the Dino Man works for him. High Evolutionary who is extremely into genetical scientists, just like Geno Imagine's father is. This pissing her off to smack the High Evolutionary. The Imagine's easily managing to fight Captain Marvel and now him. Some of the strongest Marvel characters shows how incredibly powerful the Seven are. But while everybody are distracted, the Spider Man goes to find the shard. He does find it, but in the hands of Dr. Doom who was on the island once before too. Dr. Doom was recruited by Geno to follow this group chasing the zero shard for an upcoming reason. The hybrids were even sent by Geno to serve Doom, as Dr. Doom ordered them to fight our heroes to attract them into the high evolutionary. Why that's while they're distracted fighting each other. He just goes in easily grabbing the shard and bam. The shard which by high evolutionary has been mixed up by another material and toxic vibranium. One which can melt any metal and the opposite of vibranium. Dr. Doom using the shard opens a portal to the ice moon. This was the exact reason why Geno recruited him. Doom will gather the super powerful weapons of Ice King for Geno. As the others find out they were tricked and the fight stops, with our heroes using the final shot of the Rift Gun traveling into the frozen moon. High Evolutionary does not join in because with his little time spent on the zero shard, it shows him visions of the future as well. High Evolutionary sees visions of the end, the death of every single reality and everyone, meaning that he saw the last reality winning this universal war, making their victory inevitable, we have already failed. He is now in search of any chance he could stay away safe from this end. As our heroes are now also on the frozen moon, the Imagine opens a protection shield to protect them all against the storm. They all go inside Ice King's castle seeing his many reality danger level collections, with himself asleep within there. John Jones is stepping on a trap activates Ice King explaining to them who he is. But also saying how them making it to his castle makes them too powerful and dangerous to be free within realities. So the ice moon begins holding up even more than before. Thor and Storm cannot stop it anymore. But before our heroes freeze to death, they find Dr. Doom who has collected weapons from Ice King's collection, fighting our heroes with them, nearly killing every single one of them showing how powerful this collection is. As the Spider-Man manages to steal the Zero Shard taking it to the mech, which has been fully repaired and redesigned to fit the Seven look with whole new weapons, mech getting fully charged by the shard. Our heroes are all ready for the final war, as Doom takes the weapons with Portal to the IO. The Imagine Order who are extremely tired of the Seven, Geno forcing them all to build a more deadlier weapon of Midas's research, the Collider, a Doomsday device made for absolute chaos, fully destroying everything and every living being on the island, wiping it all out, while Imagine Order goes to hiding once it activates, waiting for things to get safe to rebuild, wiping out the Seven and everything 
everything with them. Things have gone beyond just an Ayuana 7 fight. So as 4 loopers wearing these piloting suits join in as gunners to control the weapons of the mech. Paradigm getting gifted a new suit and a sword by scientist. She will be the pilot of the mech as everyone else ground army. The scientist even building Iron Man a huge Hulkbuster like armor. Then a suit for a Spider-Man. Then Wolverine and Shuri suit. Which these two do not wear them. Shuri likes Wakanda take more. And the Imagine likes Wolverine looking this way way more. Both sides are ready. And while they were preparing. Peely drinks a Peely smoothie on the island. Yeah, banana cannibalism. This makes him yet again just like Bunker Jones DC visions of the future. Visions which after he forces the loopers to teach him driving. That doesn't really go well at all for a while. Until he learns how to drive a truck. Attaching a slurp container to it. Preparing to do something regarding the future vision Peely has seen. So the final fight of Zero Var begins. Collision. Leading the mission will be the finest mech captain in all reality. She'll be behind the controls. You and your team will be on weapons. The bridge is yours. Paradigm. Weapons team, listen up. Today, we're gonna put an end to the imagined order. For good. Ground team, standing by. We'll have those shields down by the time you reach the island. After all, they do call me the legend. Uh-huh. Copy that. Stand by to engage launch sequence. Nothing we can't handle, just as soon as we figure it out, we'll handle it. Yep, what he said. Your time to shine, buddy. It's worth a shot. Power to emergency recovery. The 
All this time, purely seeing the visions of the future, asking us to teach him driving. All of that was because he saw this exact moment in his vision, planning to save us by changing the future. What a hero! We've eliminated the shields. The collider's exposed. We're on our way. For this moment, imagine an order where fighting their father. As Geno and D imagined falling to the zero point while their jet boots are jammed, falling on the zero point as it is focused on all realities. Normally this would kill you right away, but don't forget Geno has studied the zero point more than anyone else. He knows how to handle this situation. While hitting the zero point, Geno takes himself and the imagine into a super magical and high tech place, then making the zero point focus on him so foundation follows in. As he takes Jones in too, Geno here wanted to talk with foundation one last time, as him and his daughter are turning into billion pieces and into every reality, telling Foundation how his mission always was to protect and perfect realities. But Foundation saw this as immoral, so now he has the chance to take over and do better than Geno did if he can, while also Geno warns the Foundation, if he fails doing so, the end of every reality will arrive. Everyone's lives are in his hands now, Geno finally getting to rest after protecting us for thousands of years, as him and the imagined dust of dying, or so we thought. The Foundation and Jones begin returning to the airlines as this happens. The 
super serious foundation thanks to John Jones is becoming more wholesome. Jones is developing the seven characters into loving one another more. He's a true legend. Gunner here goes after Dr. Doom looking for the Ice King's weapon collections. But as expected, Doom kills Gunner betraying Dio to take all the weapons into his domain, wanting to do what the Imagine Order did but with his own lead from now. Dr. Doom has a huge ego, it was obvious he would never work under Dio and just want to use them. As the three highest ranks of Io all have been dealt with, the seven are moments away from victory. We don't have much time. Those crystals will detonate zero points. Take them out. Zero points almost to the top. Last one. The Imagine Order is kicked out of Reality Zero, Collider destroyed and the Zero Point freed from being used by it, as the Seven say goodbye to the Marvel heroes, sending them back to Reality 616. Iron Man being the saddest. No more armor bros for him spending time with Foundation and knowing him. No! Foundation does not let them keep their scientist made suits either. Then Jones getting kissed by Shuri. As the Order is extremely pissed at Wolverine for letting Imagine go to her death, even though she asked for it. She has no idea how the Imagine is still alive. Geno said the truth to Foundation, how he did something to both him and the Imagine. But he lied how that thing was slowing their death. It was more faking death to get rebuilt within a different reality. For Geno, him being reborn in this reality, while the Imagine in another reality being found by the Seven. Geno losing to the Foundation was just a fake off. The Seven have no clue where he is. There is a terrifying reason why Geno faked his death coming up really soon. Sweat Insurance is here to repair all the war damages against the island, especially tilted towers, even hosting a party near Sanctuary. Then the Seven especially the Order begin releasing people from the loop, preparing them to go back to their home realities. The scientist, once the war is finally over, he finds time to experiment on his new technology, a sentient AI called Amy. Amy with the most lovely personality an AI has ever had. She loves Thief, has huge interest into deadliest weapons, more sus than anyone you have ever seen. She won't stop calling me daddy. She hates Jones thinking that he's annoying and dumb. While Jones calls her a calculator. Basically, yeah. She's the best! Visitor after the war ends. Thinks about retiring from the Seven and living on this island as guardian of it for eternity. This retirement was also a teaser to how soon the story creator Donald Mustard himself retires. The replacement being Charlie Van. Let him cook! After the Imagine Order has been taken care of, the Peace Syndicate and Eevee find their way into the island. Making parties while spending time in a really interesting restaurant hotel thingy, one owned by Midas. Now that the Imagine Order are gone, Midas who helped the Seven out in the war sending his agents to spy on Io in their command locations went. Midas is finally out of hiding bringing his peace syndicate onto the island. Exactly why everyone believes that Midas is the secret X character, the one who commands all crime syndicates like Peace and many others. And as said before, the crime boss of all himself. The snap skin hints to this even more. The peace syndicate helps the loopers sell
celebrate freedom, but it is way too early for that. The last reality warning the eye of them losing to the seven before zero wars even started. High evolutionary seeing the future, the victory of last reality end of all. Then Geno intentionally planning to escape the seven and these islands like this, putting all the burden and blame on foundation's shoulders, saying how danger is coming very soon. Not even days after victory, the warning is here, the herald, with the zero points energy flowing free through the waters, since it is free now under the waters, no more under control and protection. The herald makes the tree gather all this radiational energy becoming the reality tree, connected to all realities with a bloom made out of the three main energies in balance. The zero point sense this energy getting stolen and gets worried, then doing massive shockwaves which go beyond realities, asking for help. Help from someone familiar perhaps. With these shockwaves, items from other realities also get brought into our world, grabbing the scientists attention, sending us and Amy to research them. One of those items get brought to us with Darth Vader and Obi-Wan, that being the Sith Holocron. Darth Vader and the Empire have actually helped the IO many times in the past. But while things are calm for now, the true danger begins. The reality tree keeps shifting locations through many different versions of them from other realities, bringing in two horrifying things from them. One being from the Dark Seas while the other the Chrome, deadliest weapon of the last reality. The Chrome right away goes after Foundation Imagine and the Order, fully taking over them in secret while teleporting them into last reality's ship. Then the other members get extremely worried of these three being lost, with no sign of where they have been taken to, until they see the Chrome starting to take over the entire island. Now the scientist knows that the IO was right, and freeing the zero point was a mistake. The remaining seven members take samples of chrome as the scientist experiments on it, finding out how it's a version of chromium which builds the spire, and how the multiplying speed is unlike anything that exists. So crazy that it shows the true power of the last reality. In no time it defeats all the remaining seven, teleporting them into the last reality ship as well. But one remains our last hope. This isn't how it ends. Paradigm uses vibrational energy through her suit to focus the zero point on reality 659, trying to find the final chance we have to change the foretold victory of the last reality. This is exactly what everything the last reality did was building up to. They attacked in season X to completely scare, mess up and weaken the IO, while giving the seven more power and control to come on top. That's exactly why Cube Queen brought IO's fight against the seven being in vain. The last reality was counting on the seven winning. That win allowed weakness within the islands to manipulate it's the zero point, something the IO would never allow. The weakness being other things on the island getting free access to the zero point's energy. So the ones who stopped the last reality from killing all realities are gone now, as the seven are clueless what they're dealing with, leading to what Geno escaped from arriving. The heralds of the nothing teleported in by the chrome. Chrome nados are spreading the chrome in extremely fast speed, while once again no sweat is here to help out, building technologies which makes locations float, so they and the people within them stay safe from the chrome's takeover, as the safe home of the seven has become the icon of darkness, a chrome castle. In this castle, the herald keeps watching over the tree, waiting for it to gather more zero point energy so it's ready for the final mission. As the chrome takes over and the tree gathers more energy, Jones and Amy are alone together. Amy sad and pissed for losing her dad scientist, removing her anger on Jones, as they try and use reality tree saplings to contact Paradigm. They try their best to find a way for saving us all, as the paradise of last reality begins. They start celebrating their foretold victory, destroying all realities, creating their perfectly ordered world, as the tree is ready for Herald's final task, Fracture.
Shield dies saving her purpose, turning the tree into an extreme nuke, destroying the entire island and get rid of the bubble, making it so from now on the last reality can easily come within the island and no more barrier to stop them. But Paradigm is finally ready to save us. Status report. Amy, status report. Nav is down. Seven cards are flying. Everything's offline. These coordinates are wrong. We are far from home. Home is gone. Paradigm makes us bring in leftover chunks from the blown up island, bringing in even the dead heralds fused with the tree, some remains of Ayo's huge drill, the giant cuddle head and more, as she herself begins the last resort to escape our fate. I've done everything I can. This is your fight now. Paradigm brings up chunks from three different realities together, three of the five realities, using the zero point energy to hold these chunks together. The offbound home of Jenna, frozen reality home of Ice King, and while these two form the first map, under them the jungled reality home of Origin and Cube Queen takes place. Dr. Rasson, the tank she was expecting, also flies through space, coming into this new island, landing underground where the jungle is, as John super slowly moves towards the islands on a floating chunk. He gonna be there for C. Seasons, and he's drinking Peely again. No! Until he arrives, All Found is our new focus, the Ageless's Kingdom. As two young members of the All Found, Smith, Sylvie, and Kieran, the Rift Knight, he is a foretold hero who gets gifted an extremely powerful sword by Sylvie, prepared for his upcoming great fate. To prove themselves ready, they together have to fight the greatest champion himself, Ageless. Our young heroes come out champion thanks to All Found's legendary weapon, Excalibur Rifle, a sword exploding launcher. Swords made out of the strongest material of all Omniverse kinetic ore. The old founds even have a lovely bird they can control made out of this material. A super sick shield and the best melee in history, kinetic hammer. The old found are just way too cool. While their mines where they take these materials from have also been brought into the island. Mines which the kinetic ore within them have evolved into refined kinetic ore. Once what Paradigm did happened. Paradigm who is now lost deactivated in space. This kinetic ore is awesome but also bad news. The nothing can speak through this material once it is refined. He begins manipulating people on the island. His focus is on the refarden of all found Stellan, the one who came to aid us with nothing, and one caused by the sages a beautiful monster enabled by the hubris of a champion. Champion being ageless. The ageless lets Stellan in giving him protection, even gifting Stellan a sword. About that, the scientists gifted Paradigm a sword, as Midas gifted marigolds and so on. People in this game love giving each other sharp blades. Stop it. The nothing manipulates Stellan's dreams appearing 
acting as a shapeless man within them, terrifying us all and telling him he would either come here killing every single one of us, crushing the islands to nothing, or we do as he says. What he says being for Stellan to create a reef gate and focus it on a specific location. Stellan and Asus have no choice but to build this reef gate, as the reef warden sees into the skies watching stars go dark. Those stars being realities that are being destroyed by the last reality, as they are flying right into the island to finish building the perfect ordered world. As a Stellan gets the help of Reef Knight Jules to build this reef gate, so in return they teach Jules about the secrets of the island. Now a young person reaches ageless, asking for a place to live at since they are taken away from their home worlds being mega reality. The ageless agrees with it letting them have a home, them being the high stakes club, the leader being Johnny the Red, a super talented monster and vampire hunter with a sword built out of a unique alloy, one that in Fortnite is the weakness of all vampires. Then we have Helsey, the Boba Master who is also the brute of this club, final member Lucian, the protector who sees this club as his family, the one who currently is missing and the other two are very worried for. For now Helsey has everyone on the island to tell her if they see any monster. They get warned of vampire drifts within a bowling alley, the only choosing to take care of this one. Johnny kills every vampire as she keeps an eye on this place for now, seeing Lucian coming to her. Lucian looking extremely weak says how all this time he has been fighting one monster stronger than all the others. So the club goes to listen to the music of their favorite concert and singer for their reunion. That singer being a star fan who the high stake club are the biggest fan of. Halsey being the absolute biggest simp of her even wearing her merch. And that's exactly why she vibes to music in the lobby. They have no clue regarding the evil dark secrets behind the star fan. Till they find out back to Stellan who fully creates the reef gate with jewels. Then getting refined kinetic ore to overcharge this gate. The gate opening and focused on the place the shapeless man asked for. At the same time Amy all along on the island is preparing to save her father. She gets inspired of this reef gate building her own tiny one to experiment on it. Sending items through it which returned corrupted. Then she gains a dark creepy voice through it. This voice finally reveals what the nothing is doing to the seven in the last reality ships. He is corrupting them, removing the souls of the seven, turning them into mindless soldiers. So Amy must save the scientists before that happens. Amy plans to build herself a robot and she steals the aim robot's blueprints, used for the robots that came to the island through the iceberg, building an aim for herself, installing her data in it, thanks to some old found chips within the birds. Now we have Amy 1.0, until the scientist is free to build her an actual a robot suit with teeth and super deadly weapons. A pocket chainsaw, flamethrowers, a little cheese knife, a jazzy piano, a collapsible candelabra. Amy jumps within the gate now at the last reality ships, trying her best to save the scientist, saying her goodbyes to us. None of the people we knew are with us anymore, all gone. As she's gone, two other beings come through the portal. Nox, part of a triarchy, ruler of darkness. The triarch come from another realm stretched among the stars. This realm was said to be extremely peaceful. Its people happy as Nox brought the comfort and peace of night to them all. But one day, a member of triarch dies. And the other, Aurora, ruler of dawn, fails to keep the stars glowing, leading to darkness taking over their realm. Destroying the entire thing as Nox leaves this realm to our worlds once it is gone. Our worlds were 
in its locksmith's the decaying force, the Nothing. The Nothing granting him a wish regarding his realm. In return, Nox has to join the last reality's cause. He agrees, getting changed and evolved by the Nothing as he destroys countless of realities with the last reality. And now he is here, sent by the Nothing. The second person brought through the rift, Dahlia, who takes the chalice of Cube Tastrophe with herself into the island. A chalice hidden within this location by her. One which is useless without a builder, but once it chooses a being for itself. With this, that person can destroy entire worlds. As Dahlia and Nox sabotage the rift gate, making it unbalanced and exploding. This shows us the land visions of the shapeless man getting happy, letting us know how even this was part of his plan. As it leaves the Stellan out of any option, only seeing our doomed future, giving up for now, wishing to the stars for a final chance. Then teasing what's coming up. A crime fight begins on the island between the Peace Syndicate and a new syndicate called Cold Blooded, with her being the leader. The Cold Blooded were just the first sign of much more. Now the exploded Rift Gate leaks energy into the air, and its location focus has changed into one Japanese inspired reality, Mega. With the rift opened in the sky being red, a teaser into what soon comes in and what the nothing wants. Through this rift arrives the fourth reality of the five. Mega Reality is here, bringing to us Mega City with Peace Syndicate, Unseen Luminaries, as it also brings in more cultural places of this reality with the River Guard and Fox Clan. Going through the main syndicates of this reality, we got Peace Syndicate, ones who we have met members of them before, and now they can finally be at home again. Thunder welcoming them back. The Sushi Master with the best restaurant in town and a lover of race bikes, who's the highest rank after X, which seems to be Midas. This is a crime syndicate, but the most peaceful one. Unlike another crime syndicate named the Unseen, they are very similar to the Peace but unlike those, the Unseen do not care if at the middle of their crimes innocent people get hurt, leader of this syndicate being Highwire, and her right hand an embodiment of Black Hole's Renzo the Destroyer, who's both a destroyer and a creator. The two other members are Styx and Dahlia playing important parts soon. The third syndicate, Luminaries, founded by Mystica, a wise magical being from a different reality which was destroyed by the last reality all left being her and a plant from her world. After destroyed, she travels finding a new home, Reality Mega. Here using her knowledge creating the luminaries, her and the other members building the craziest takes of Mega City together, and forming a second side of this syndicate called the Explorers. This syndicate's take will help out many soon. Now for the more cultural, historic syndicates we have the River Guard, the empire of this reality. One currency with Mizuki as their empress. The River Guards have the power to control water, tides and oceans. They are the most powerful of this reality, protectors of it and the rivers. The river guards throughout their entire history have been in war against their rivals Fox Clan. Once Umizuki's brother Stray even quits river guard to become a member of. The Fox Clan is a mystical group with a unique pink power flowing through them. The same group Drift became a part of. This clan which is based around the Kitsune has one of those beings as their secret protector. She could even be where all this unique power began from. But now, Nox gets tasked to delete all last reality related files from the Peace Syndicate servers, showing how these syndicates know a lot about them and how the nothing is trying to hide something from us all. The Peace Syndicate gets extremely worried by this happening, beginning search to find the saboteur. For the search to get easier on them it would help out a lot, if the other syndicates joined in the hunt too. So the Peace Syndicate tried their best to create this peace among them all, starting with the River Guard and the Fox Clan, the two who have never been at peace. But thanks to Mizuki's brother being with the Fox Clan now, the two groups 
become biased about each other because of these members. With a little enjoying ramen and messing up Thunder's restaurant, they finally agree to join in the peace syndicate for protecting their home against the last reality. Now we have three syndicates in peace as two more are left. To find the subject where the peace syndicate goes talking with the luminaries and Mystica, her who has horrible experience with the last reality accepts to join in the peace syndicates, creating four of them united. Then the luminaries building a device together, which can track the dark energy within Mega, finding the ones who are now with the last reality. The device finds three beings chosen as the danger. Nox, Styx and Dahlia, the great hacker. The thing is, as said, Styx and Dahlia are unseen members, so it makes everyone think that the unseen are being manipulated by the last reality. And because the unseen are already very deadly, the United Syndicates disguise us as a high-tech Peely, sending us to speak with either Renzo or the leader Highwire. I chose Renzo because man, he's so cool! He tells us how the unseen are not and will never become part of the last reality. Renzo is the only one who gets to cause chaos in Mega. He also explains how those two members helping the last reality are traitors doing this on their backs. So they are no more unseen and Renzo will hunt them down to destroy. This means yes, the unseen mad at their own traitor members also join in the peace, making all the five syndicates be united ready to protect Mega from any danger, breaking some communication towers connected to the last reality, thinking they have saved themselves. Little did they know last reality just communicated through refined kinetic ore to Stellan, and that nothing can do it to the others too. The towers were a trick and are meaningless, while even the peace created among the syndicates was a trick. Nox was sent to distract the syndicates keeping them focused on Mega and nowhere else on the island, making them ignore some cracks happening on the island, calling it just a thing that happens because of Mega. But that was not true. The distraction of Nox made no one pay attention to another last reality member on the island, Serenade, one who seems to be a former River Guard member, as strong as Mizuki and just like her having the power to control waters and tides. But unlike Mizuki, she seems to be a traitor of River Guard corrupted by the cursed waters, now part of the last reality with even a new ability to hypnotize beings with her singing, as she goes to these River Guard towers creating two more of them near the other kingdoms on the island, controlling water through these towers, using them to cause these cracks. But how exactly? Tree veins always grow in the direction of water while there are thousands of massive trees under the ground right now. Their veins are opening cracks pushing the chunks of the ground away to reach into the water manipulated by Serenade and the towers. All of this done to reveal the hidden jungle reality under the map to the island's people, without them knowing it was part of last reality's plan.
the reveal is introducing the second side of the luminaries, the explorers into discovering its secrets. Going into the main temple of the jungle, they discover a technology from the Autobots, which activates the device teleporting in Optimus Prime. Prime in the past must have been within this jungle to leave this device there and be brought back when needed, as a mysterious person has been watching all of this happen. Dr. Stone, Stone Horror Tank was found in the jungle by Relic, the first person to discover this jungle, exploring every secret of it, as he finds a legendary suit of the jungle people using it for his own, a suit which can turn him invisible, rift him around and much more. Relic takes Dr. Stone out of the tank using the jungle's technology to heal her back up, as after a stone walks to a device left by someone, which she thinks was meant for her to find. This kinetic core device projects all the needed information regarding the jungle's secrets, and even an extremely important device and how exactly it functions. That's device being the apparatus. Currency all broken. A broken up jungle because the people of this reality abandoned it so long ago that the stone struggles to find a close date to it. Her interested in figuring out why they abandoned it. She thinks there are answers here to our future. While at the same time as her, the explorers also have fully taken over the jungle. Their equipments everywhere. Building even their own bases. They all and Dr. Stone see temples you need to sacrifice things to open. Statues which can rift you. More statues of mysterious jungle members. Then the main temple with three main devices. One connected to Prime. Another to Apprachus and lastly a warning towards a vampire looking character. Dr. Stone learns how the jungle people were scientists and visionaries. Ones who found a home among the stars. Abandoning this jungle vanishing right into it. But they also have left warnings and things which can predict the future. Filled with knowledge. One especially the Apprachus. She must fix this to find out why the jungle people left. To do that the Stone needs help. So her seeing the explorers decides to join them as their expert. Getting this new uniform from the explorers. As she tasks them especially Trace who gets really close to her. To start repairing this apparatus. Using this map she has found containing all the information needed for fixing it. Don't forget someone left this for a Stone to find. So someone also wants her to fix this device. Probably the same people who revealed the jungle. To fix this apparatus 4 kinetic prisms are needed. We help a Stone getting all 4 and giving them to Trace. So they begin putting them in the right locations. As they all keep fixing up finding broken parts of the apparatus till finally it is almost fixed up. Until the apparatus gets ready, many things within this jungle happen. One of those regarding the chalice of Kyutastroph, which was hit by Dahlia at this location. The place has now fallen by the jungle's reveal, leading to Aurelia finding this chalice, changing it up to fit her style as hiding it within a box at a hidden jungle ruin. The chalice begins manipulating places on the map drawing things on the rocks around the island, which all of them lead into the exact location it is kept at. We gather all information needed going to the hidden ruin. To grab the chalice, we first put gold offerings for Aurelia. Then by taking it, Aurelia or Oro's curse takes over us, and they using our body go to Aura who sent us to find the chalice. Aura gives Aurelia a golden fork in return of getting the chalice, and sending it to somewhere safe, so it doesn't fall in the wrong hands, even though I'm sure it will at chapter 5. Another story is regarding corals on the island going lost, warring the princess of Fort Sight at Santis. So she gets help from Triggerfish and us to find out what has happened. Us learning how Riptide and Turk are capturing the corals, because a secret rich collector has offered to pay a lot for these corals. He saved the corals and for this to never happen again. Triggerfish calls his cousin to come on the islands and help out. Then we have this character who was just a typical mega city girl, who one day a shadow ruler Umbra chooses her as a vessel, turning her into this. She is now in search of being freed from Umbra, researching the jungle because it is filled with dormant shadow energy which can save her. Finally now we have my favorite, Orin and Alexa, who they just like the Rift Knights get foretold to have a great heroic fate coming up, choosing to join in with the others while waiting for the fate, asking Aegis to become Princess Lexa and Prince Orin. The Aegis actually agrees and lets them in. I swear he's the nicest king ever. Lexa being the more lazy one, puts all the work of actually ruling and doing things on Oro's shoulders while she just messes around, waiting for the fate. One which Astria will play a part within and tease, a being of two. One form Nebula, an embodiment of creation, while the other embodiment of darkness Astria. The two who search for each other across time and space, finally finding one another. A reminder of everything and nothing's past. As all those things and the fixing of the apparatus was happening, Dr. Stone was working with Optimus Prime to figure out what's going on. Prime who does not fully trust her but he feels like we need her to survive. Together they realize two terrifying things. One regarding the zero point which ever since chapter 4 has been petrified here at the jungle, locking itself away from everything. 
The zero point energy holding the island's chunks together is fading away, making the chunks soon move away from one another. Now the most terrifying part. Formidable enemies have taken a notice ever since chapter 4 began, and have been flying towards us ever since to finish their mission. Why has it taken the enemies so long to reach us? Remember in season 1 where Stellan said the stars are going dark? These stars that Stellan was referring to are realities being destroyed and killed. Killed by none other than last reality. Once who are ready to finally create the reality of perfect order once they reach the chapter 4. But before it, they need to destroy all realities in their way of coming in. Exactly why stars have been going dark more recently. And why it's taking the formidable enemies so long to reach us. This time, no more bubble to stop the last reality either. Dr. Soul must fix the approaches to find the secrets that could save us before the last reality arrives. Which talking about the Stellan, she gets help from some reformed and kinetic ore blueprints, using them to supercharge the approaches just like a Stellan supercharged the reef gate. Finally, the approaches is fixed and turned on, projecting something coming towards us as it's getting closer and closer causing an unnatural eclipse to happen. That eclipse has to be caused by the cube cradle reaching in closer and closer, the approaches predicting the doom of all getting closer, and how much time we have left. But another secret reveals by this, a person who goes to the locations where the eclipse happens at before the last reality arrives, collecting powerful and important objects before destruction, begins the arrival of the eclipse faction. Kato Forns, the Omniversal Collector, has arrived, one who also owns a time machine going into the different times of the locations he reaches, collecting every single powerful rich thing he can, even if it's hands or heads. Poor Midas! Wow! Kato has rings which contain darkness energy within them, activating it allowing the darkness to take over his body, transforming Kato into the most powerful and the coolest vampire, one which has no mouth and instead uses darkness energy while floating to drain your life out of you. He is super into Midas, even stealing his golden drum gun as his new favorite weapon, while Kato himself has a custom made iconic kinetic blade, a blade with cursed souls within it, which on contact with any being they steal life from those beings, draining them right into the builder. He went for kinetic blade because that is the iconic weapon of his home reality. Yes, mega reality. Kato slipped onto the island with the same red rift. The rift was even red to exactly tease his arrival, while Kato has collections like a looper calendar. Then he has a specific collections only containing objects from each of the five realities. Frozen, jungle, offbound, then even one which sadly we will not be seeing it come to the chapter 4 map. Right near all the five reality collections we have the icon of Coliseum. Proving I was right and this is the final reality of the five. But one reality here is missing. The missing one is reality mega. Kato refuses to steal anything from his home having a huge respect for it. While even as a hotel owner. With the hotel management mansion which completely got rid of Aegis's castle. Poor guy. He has built an entire hotel with even the river guard themed logo. And the mega theme design with even a restaurant. And the iconic mega samurai suit in there as well. This man loves his home world. I mean can you really blame him? Look at the graphics! Oh my god! Kato even designing his henchmen based on the wild cause of mega reality. While here, the dealers gather all type of collections for Kato, as he himself gets really interested into Slap and a Slur, making this pretty collection for them. Then going all out buying the entire Slap factory, sending his henchmen to take over. As this legendary vampire collector takes over before the last reality destroys this place, Dr. Son has gotten help from a friend she knows who she needs, but also calls annoying. A mastermind named Nolan Chance asking him to build out a haste team for something she needs stolen for her. In return, everyone in the haste team get to keep whatever else they steal from Kato Forns. The first person we bring in the team is Khabi Lay, being sent an invite card and brought here through real life. Then the rest are all people Nolan Chance has had experience with, and annoyed a lot. The first person Nolan goes for being Piper, his getaway driver who's super into racing, so she works as a pizza delivery. To gather enough money for participating in a professional muscle race, car. She makes us have a date night with her in order to grab her attention joining the haste team. We do as she says then in the end spending time together at Mega City, as she is impressed agreeing to join in, cause also she needs the money for racing. Now we have Antonia, the queen herself, one who is a master thief. She single handedly can do everything alone, never getting caught. One who's actually in relationship with Nolan, Nolan ruining it by being scared of death, leaving her alone in a haste scene as he grabs the escape car. Of course Antonia easily manages to 
escape anyway. But that's a really rude thing to do to your girl. So she's very mad. To get her back in the team we steal one of the most expensive rings inside of one of Kado's vaults. Giving it to Antonia saying it's sent from Nolan. As she falls in love once more. Why Nolan? Don't ask me. Now we got the brute of the team, Fig Fish. One who wanted to begin a sub franchise. Even killing everyone within the slurp factory. Leaving that place empty to reach his dream. But Kado forms buying all of a sub completely ruins his dream. Fig Fish gives up on it, focusing on the reason he was even brought to the island. That's being Trigger Fish calling him in to help the corals be protected forever. Fiki who became this fake to fight buffs like Meow Meow to stop them from eating fishes, even having a picture of Meow Souls in his gym. He thinks of doing what he did to himself to the corals as well for helping them. Fake Fish with our help and the golds of Nolan builds a gym in the aquarium of his house, bringing in all corals to get buff in there. If we ever get a buff coral, that's why. In Fake Fish's house, there's lots of books, pizza and saps. That's because he loves reading, is addicted to sap and loves pizza. He even has Piper if he can add protein powder to it. Now that the Fig Fish is done with his promise, he also joins the Haste team to take revenge on Kado for buying a sap. There is only one member left, a hacker to take over all Kado systems and one explosive expert. The girl who was fully kicked out of Mega City cause she was way too chaotic with hacking and explosives. She's also a massive fan of Halsey and the Starfang music. A fan of Halsey because of her delicious boba drinks becoming friends. Her best friend is also Fig Fish, being kicked out of Mega she is now homeless, opening a camp here as she mods her own reboot one, agreeing to join the haste team but first she needs to study something. That is studying leading to her finding out how chrono cells are used to power the time machine Kato hides in the most protected vault. Cells that grab quantum and phantom energies once they're taken through a rift. Exactly why rifts are controlled within all Kato hotels. They are needed to fuel his machines. Now the entire haste team has finally been formed, waiting for a soul's order to begin the greatest haste ever. Haste to save us all. Before the haste begins, the eclipse finally happens within the skies. A huge red moon and a ringed dark sun. The cube cradle is very close. With it, Kado becomes his vampire form, releasing monsters as Shimmer Dusk has arrived on the island. The greatest hunter who has been chasing Kado throughout time and realities for centuries, trying to take revenge on Kado because he took everything from her. Shimmer Dusk, while arriving, sees the high stakes club, taking an interest to them, so she sends her student Victoria Saint to the stakes. Victoria becomes becoming their teacher, specially teaching Johnny to become the next greatest hunter, telling her how a day might come that she needs to move on from her other two friends, a day which Halsey and Lucian might die for her. The high stakes cops seeing the monsters taking over the island bring up their special stakes shotgun, one which with it they kill all monsters on the island, and around the same time learning the horrible truth, the truth behind the star fang, how her real name is Countess Draco. She is the Dracula vampire, the only reason she sings being to attract people into her, and in secret draining blood out of her fans. Her recent prey focus even being the high stakes, since they're the monster hunters. Now, the music which healed Lucian's pain has now become his biggest pain. Music which made Johnny feel like the others, makes her hate herself even more now. Then the music which Halsey was the biggest fan of, she has to now kill it. The high stakes which completely changed clothing to prepare for the next huge concert of the Raku, and be fully hidden within it. They have now arrived at the concert ready to do do what they must. So you finally made your choice, killing your most favorite celebrity. You really think you can kill any monster? <laughs> what are you gonna do without my music, huh? What will you listen to, Halsey? Dream? I don't think so. I wanna put you in the spotlight. So come at me then. You think you can kill this perfection? <laughs> sure, sure. I've been ninja for five centuries. My nails are stronger than any sword. I'll chop you into five pieces. Cause you know it's a reference to the five realities. You have no idea how strong I am. I'm as strong as- uh, ah! Now that Countess and all the other monsters have been dealt with, that leaves only one more problem to fix. Shimmer Dusk uses the distraction caused by the high stakes to secretly get in Kado's mansion and to take the revenge after so many years. Do 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 I love my Nike collection. La di la di da di da. <coughs> oh, you. Shimmer Dusk, you're here for revenge. 
aren't you? Do your best. Because there is no way you can defeat me, the hottest vampire, the best sneakers collector. I have stolen God's head like it was nothing. I'm a human who can turn into a vampire. Watch this. It's University of Vampire this awesome. We don't talk about Morbius. Show me what you got. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. No! Most problems of the island have been dealt with except one. Before Kato's death by Shimmer, Dr. Rasson begins the haste of stealing the time machine. Ace team successfully steals the time machine, taking it to their base, as the time machine's last focus time was season 5 chapter 1, bringing in items from that time right into us, and sending those items into real life, to the houses of some content creators, as at the same time Jones after many months his ground chunk finally arrives on the island, meeting Dr. Rasson yet again, but it's too late for them to fight each other regarding their history, everyone will die soon so they need to work together, Jones even being told how our future is in his hands so he needs to be careful. That's because Jones gets chosen to use this time machine and travel into chapter 1 season 5 alone, to then in there find the key to our future bringing it into chapter 4. That will save us from last reality. While Dr. Son from chapter 4 sends her message through time helping him out, as Jones begins to time travel into the past, to become the true legend he's said to be. But before, yet another stranger arrives on the island, one called Aurora, ruler of Dawn and one of the Triarchs. After the destruction of the Triarch realm, Aurora has been chasing Nox, calling him a traitor and ready to stop Nox if needed. Through her chase, every reality she says that Nox has passed away by is completely left destroyed. Because Nox is now with the last reality, destroying realities to reach the world of perfect order, the nothing has changed the Nox. The last location Nox has been to is our island, exactly why Aurora is here. She begins searching for him as Nox's energy can be found within a strongholds of Kado forms. It seems that he was searching for one of Kado's collections. A collection revealed to be an artifact from the destroyed world of the Triarch rulers. Nox finds and takes this artifact back to the Triarch realm with himself. Aurora seeing this is hoping that maybe Nox has done all of this to use the artifacts for reforging their realm back to living. So with the new hope for Nox awakened within her, she also goes back to the Triarch realm, hoping to speak with Nox to find out what his plan is. The Triarch's realm and this chalice should play important parts in Chapter 5's storyline, both of them being a big reason why in Season 5 the reef gate was built. Everything that has happened in chapter 4 always was because of the manipulation of the shapeless man aka the nothing and the Nox. But there is one bigger reason why the nothing wanted Kado on the island than just helping Nox. For this one we need to look at Dr. Stone. The last reality was the one to reveal the jungle for us to explore. Then someone leaving this map on the jungle for Dr. Stone to find it. One that showed her all the secrets of the jungle even how to fix the approaches. To me that someone has to be the same people who revealed the jungle. That's 
device interesting Dr. Stone into finding secrets, which show her how formidable enemies are coming to kill us all, and how the key to escaping them is within the past. So Dr. Stone from then had to find a way to travel back into the past. Oh look, Kato here with a time machine. It seems as the jungle was revealed to lead into Stone feeling the need of time traveling. That also means that the nothing wants us to go back into the past. But why would the last reality need us going into the past for their goals? Chapter 5 should be the answer of it. Talking about the time machine, John Jones has now used it going back alone to season 5 chapter 1, as all of us and Dr. Stone wait on chapter 4 for his return to save us all. There begins Fortnite OG. Jones arrives at Chapter 1 Season 5 landing right at Pleasant Park. This is our Chapter 1, not an alternate one. Fortnite time travel is not like Marvel where when you change the past it creates a branch timeline. Instead, time travel in this game is like Back to Future or a recent example time slipping in Loki show. When Loki time slips to the past and changes the past like creating this crack on the ground, the future also changes because of it. Meaning in the entire history of Loki's future, everything changes based on how this crack affects what happens in the future. It's being there throughout the whole thing now. This is exactly how Fortnite time travel works. It's the same timeline meaning changing the past changes the future as well. Because of this, Dr. Son tells John Jones make sure not to change the past. That could make changes into the present time as Son is within in horrible ways. Jones does his best but it still fails. So he travels back into season 5 again to reset his mistake. Resetting makes Dr. Son forget she has sent a voice across time to Jones. So she does it again. Then John Jones fails again. Back to season 5 once more as Dr. Son sends a voice again. Then this cycle keeps happening more and more, until Dr. Asuna starts feeling like she has already sent Jones voice lines many times before, even if she doesn't remember doing so. Because Jones going back to season 5 keeps resetting Asuna to the moments of sending the voice line. Dr. Asuna through this figures out how what Jones does in the past is changing her and everyone on the island. She is hoping that means Jones is doing something right, but he gives up. He has failed too many times, making him fully change plans and not caring about changing the history of Fortnite anymore. This is Jones's final attempt at saving us all. Fortnite OG season begins that final attempt. Jones takes the truck planning to move the time machine currency at Pleasant Park into Dusty. Through his way, Jones sees a banana peel on the road, making him panic, crashing through trees right into a fruit selling thing. Then the waters of Loot Lake. He is now forced to use a quad crasher instead, for moving the time machine all the way to the other side of the water. As once he does, season 6 starts and a floating island happens. Then Jones gets help from some friends, asking them to upgrade Dusty to turn it into how exactly it was upgraded by the scientists in Season X. Right here we learn how Jones is thinking of using the Season X scientist's help for his mission, as already the past changes, because the cube is not going for taking energy through the runes on the island like how it did in Chapter 1, leading to it hitting the Ice Moon with a much smaller lightning strike while not even exploding anymore. As Season 7 begins with Polar Peak here but the castle doesn't make it, and the ice chunk is much smaller thanks to no cube explosion. The Polar Castle not Making it to the island means that the Ice King, Fire King, and the giant monster stays on the frozen moon. So no volcano or locations exploding. No Neo tilted because no mech to fight the monster. That also means that Paradigm because of John Jones changing the past will not be freed from Io's prison for piloting the mech. So no her being stuck on the ice moon. Her not helping the Io also means that she's no more seen as a traitor to the seven. Since that history is removed and altered now. As no more volcano also means that Jones and Pilly will no more be stuck in a vault together. No more drinking his friend. Hello there. Basically yeah, Jones completely messed up Fortnite history badly, but he has now thanks to the quad crasher made it to Dusty. As together with the help of some of his friends, they even build and prepare a 7 rocket for the scientist's arrival. Everything is all prepared for the scientist, so right when he arrives, they can do what Jones needs help with to save us all. So season X arrives, with it bringing in the meteor stuck in time once more. Then the scientist leaving his pod once again to move towards Dusty. Dusty which has not changed into his past form thanks to Jones making changes to it before scientists arrival. So that's yet another change of past. All these changes even leading to a mix up of some characters created. Like Omega mixed with Ragnarok, Lynx mixed with Renegade, Pele with Lil Whip, or these new drifted mix ones. Then even Raven X cuddle team leader. They seem to be created through the same special riffs that mixed up Jones and Pele together. Thanks to Base for this theory. The scientist is here and Jones explains to him how he joined out helping 
in the seven in the future. Now him traveling to the past because this is the only option to save everyone in Jones's present. And for that he needs scientist's help. The scientist has no choice but to accept. So together, they prepare for yet another rocket launch. The key to our future is the black hole. So it must begin once more. The Seven use the time machine which turns the rocket into a huge shark at first. David Fit keep changing a huge meteor into many different objects from basically every Fortnite season. We smack every time in Fortnite history into the zero point so once again a black hole begins but different. The Omniverse is resetted and being rebuilt once more with the same pieces. But us and people from many different times has also been pulled out of their time, thrown into the Omniverse with this reset. While the last black hole only recreated the Omniverse healing it, this one resets and recreates time as well, making things much different than it used to be. While I said people from every chapter, especially chapter 4, get pulled out of their time and thrown into the Omniverse just like we did in this event. People like Ageless Thunder, Eevee, the Luminaries and the Explorers, Midas and many more, all taken from chapter 4 or others thrown into to random realities like Lego, then a reality of racing, then another reality all based around music and concerts, which all the Fortnite music artists like Travis Scott, Ariana and such should be from. At this moment, Eminem taking the stage to perform a concert at, as we pass by many different realities in the Omniverse after, a robotics reality, Midas's reality, Cuddle Team Leaders, Spooky Scary Reality, one which all the food characters come from, all realities we will be able to explore once Fortnite open world releases, then many more as we get pulled to where we got taken out of. Reality Zero rebuilds once more, the protection home of Zero Point, as we and all people taken out of their own timeline like Midas and Agents, Thunder, Eevee, Ageless, Us and many more, thrown into the loop once more. Donald Master Dara of Fortnite ends right here, with traveling through the Fortnite Omniverse finally unlocked, as from now all plans will be fresh and new, handled by this time Charlie Venn, beginning his story with two factions. The Society and the Underground, a new era, chapter 5 of Fortnite. Or maybe 
fought on the battlefield, but it is won in hearts and minds. The zero point is focused on Jinho. This is our best chance to find him. We are fighting a war in which we are hopelessly outgunned. She won't stop calling me daddy, but you know. You changed my life, and I'll, I'll miss you. I hope to see you on the other side. But we'll meet again. Reality's not done with us yet. Keep the campfires burning, Jones. Wherever. And whenever you go. You said to get my cycle on my edge and what that she got got you to do to stay. The more like I should be the most I do. Sure, you know, hold this shit, kill that shit. It's a good <laughs> We've all been through a lot the last few years. We can all go home.